Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone else in between, welcome back to the 42 Podcast, where as always we are talking about the failings of the late great human race. And once again, from last time, our good friend Alex. Hey Alex, how are you doing today, buddy? What? Good, good, how about you? Oh, it's alright, man. I'm just, yeah. it's, it's, uh getting ready to move and work and everything else it's just been it's been craziness here so just hoping to to get things going and doing okay it's another week closer right yeah it's uh we're moving a week from saturday oh my god well i wish you luck thanks we're getting movers to help us unload the truck so that'll be nice yeah sweet this house is essentially four stories so I don't really want to be lugging furniture all the way up because it has a it has a basement and a finished attic, mm-hmm. and I don't want to be lugging like washers and dryers or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand, man. It's like it's totally worth the two or three hundred dollars I'm paying those guys for four hours. Yep, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to break your back. No, that's the nice thing about having a job that pays okay. You can. You can you can splurge when it comes to moving and stuff because mm-hmm. I've moved so many times where I've just yeah. had to like at least this move I'm not having to like rush to move out. Yeah. Like, oh, when when I was in my early twenties, I was living in this apartment complex, and they really wanted me. They really because they knew I wasn't renewing, and someone wanted to move in early, so I get a call <laughs> like a Tuesday, and like if you can be out by Thursday night. We'll give you 500 bucks. Oh, my God. So I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> Guess I'll go live with my family for a couple of weeks until I can yeah. find a new apartment. But for 500 bucks, especially when you're, you know, 22, 23, that's, you know, I mean, even now 500 bucks is in a small amount of money. But yeah. But anyway, so that's kind of what's going on in my world, you know, and work and all that crap. So, yeah, yeah work. Yeah. So, what do you do, Senior Alex? Like, you're a programmer? Like, uh, professionally, I'm a I'm a web developer. Yeah. I, I uh, develop websites. Okay, so why haven't you done anything with our website? <laughs> well, we're we're using content management system, and I don't want to get too technical, uh, but uh, those can be difficult to deal with. Like, if you're if you're trying to do something that they don't handle, it can be difficult. Ah. Okay, we don't. Hey, don't don't feel bad about getting technical. We have bored <laughs> our audience to death with getting yeah. technical and weird shit. So. Yeah. so that's one of like the perils of using WordPress. Is like if you're trying to use it to do something that it's not supposed to do, then it can be a real pain. Well, I am not a professional like you, so I mean, if you want to use something else, we can definitely switch over. That's fine. No, no, if no, you no, want to make good. it super awesome or whatever. I think our website's really nice. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, Squarespace, Squarespace, all in all, does a pretty good job pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've, I rec- I haven't used it myself, but I've weirdly recommended it to a lot of people. <laughs> like, like, people are like, what do I do about a website? And I'm just like, just use Squarespace. Yeah, and if you pay for, the, like, the year up front, they give you a domain for free, so that's not too right. bad. 42 Entertainment, not sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to sponsor us, we'll be more than happy to, <laughs> to let them. <laughs> I think some, like Audible, <clears throat> they have this thing. It's like uh, it's kind of like Amazon does with the uh, affiliate links. So basically, for every person you get to sign up with Audible, they pay you. Right. Instead yeah. of like paying you up front. I'm sure that um, Squarespace does a similar thing. Oh, I'm sure they do. And man, I love, I love uh, uh, Audible. Love that service. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, I've had my ups and downs with Audible. Actually, I don't know if you want to go into that. Well, what's well, what I like about it is at least now you can return books. So if you get like an hour into it and you realize, wow, this narrator sucks, you can return it. No. Yeah, they didn't have that when I first started, I don't think. Yeah, that's a new feature that makes it so you don't get, like, burned real bad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about Audible that I didn't realize either when I first started... Well, I'll just explain the whole... It doesn't take very long to explain. Um, basically, 
I was um I was subscribed to Audible and I was like too lazy to shut it off, and it it, it went for like six months. So I had like and I think I was just subscribed to like the two credit per month thing. Oh, so you get Jesus. two books a month. Or maybe not. Maybe it was one credit. But I had like a ton of, like a huge backlog of credits. <laughs> and it came time, I was like, I'm just going to cancel this because I'm never using the credits. So this is, this is stupid. I'm paying. So I was going to cancel it. And I didn't realize that you have to use all of the credits before you cancel your subscription. And I just went nuts. I was like, are you kidding me? I've been paying like $15 a month for this service. Why should I have to like dump all my credits on books I might not even want right now? You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I haven't had that issue with it. Yeah. No, my, if if it was... you want to cancel, you can't have credits that are unspent. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah. I got them to allow me to cancel my subscription while being able to keep the credits. If the if Kindle Unlimited had a better selection of audiobooks, I would mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, they do audiobooks? Yeah, and they they'll sync with your Kindle. So if you're yeah, like the, reading on your Kindle, it'll pick up. But the Kindle Unlimited is like the thing where you get a book every month, right? As part of no, I'm it's ten bucks. All you can read, all you can listen to. Right. So, but their their selection isn't as big as Audible's mm-hmm. uh, for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. But I'm just waiting for you know, the five to ten years down the road when Amazon Prime is like unlimited audiobooks, unlimited comic books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cell phones are we're gonna be paying like five hundred bucks a month for Amazon Prime, but it's gonna be everything you could ever <laughs> use. Internet service provider. Yeah. Amazon is a pretty great company, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Their employees are terrible people, but it's a good company. <laughs> Wait, why do you say that? Oh, I, uh, well, I can't, this, this is a, you generalizing from the couple I've met, but, uh, last year I interviewed with a startup out in the Seattle and the two people who would have been my boss were both ex Amazon guys Mm -hmm. and they were assholes Yeah, and arrogant sons of bitches. I'm like, dude, come on. You're not, you're not this cool. (laughs) <laughs> but they think you're like oh i worked at amazon I'm like what do you do were they tech guys like engineers or um one of them was and like and you know like the guys who weren't as high a level that i met there were pretty cool even the ones that like there was one that was at amazon before this other company and he was really cool, but he was like, yeah, you know, Amazon's it's a job and it sucks. But the other guys are like, raw, Amazon is the best <laughs> thing ever. So, uh, so. Yeah, I, I hear there's a pretty big, big split between, like, the tech workers at Amazon and the non-tech workers. Like, if, if you're, like, a warehouse worker, it sucks. But if you're, like, a programmer, it's awesome. <laughs> That's what I heard. You can take your dog to work. Oh, yeah, Amazon, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, like, actually a guy who... I was working with at my current job. He went to Amazon not too long ago. Mm-hmm. He didn't outright say it, but they more than doubled the salary. So I'm like, man, maybe I could put up with that if they more than doubled my salary. Yeah. Yeah, that's how those big companies do, right? Yeah, I wish my big company did that. Because <laughs> I work for a Fortune 100 company or Fortune oh. 200 company. I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I've already ranted about the bonus structure and pay raise structure at my job. I won't do it yeah. again for the people okay, listening. I have, have to go back and listen. At least I think I have. If I haven't, maybe I'll do it some other time. Okay. All right, so you wanted to talk, because we always talk virtual reality on this podcast, so you wanted to talk some PlayStation VR? So what's going on with that Yeah, shit? so, well, let me go through the backstory a little bit of my uh, gaming history, if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, yeah. It all started when I was five years old, and I was, no. <laughs> well, actually, I was around six, and I got the, I got an NES for Hanukkah. Nice. And uh, that's when it all started. But um, for a really long time, I was a PC gamer. Long time, like 10 years. And then this past uh, holiday season, I decided to buy a PlayStation because it was, like, super cheap. Did I tell you the story about how I got the PlayStation? You have not. We have not heard this story. Uh, all right. It's a good story. I promise. It's a good story. Have, having so, a new podcast host is like having a new girlfriend. You get to hear all the new stories. <laughs> 
my girlfriend is so tired of all my stories. <laughs> so it's really good though. Uh, for like the whole holiday season, from like like the like the end of November until like January tenth, or I don't remember when it went out. So anyway, they were selling PS a uh, PS4 and either the the uh, Nathan Drake collection or Battlefront Star Wars Battlefront. Right, I remember you that. Could, either one of those, it was three hundred bucks. Pretty good deal. Yeah, I it was tempting. If I didn't already have like a pretty serious rig, I might have picked one up. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, I mean, there was some better deals for the Xbox One, um, but for the PS4, that was that was like the best deal. Um, so it's three hundred bucks and the game. And then, uh, like for like m- for like two months, I was like, I'm going to buy a PS4. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a console. It's a great deal. I might as well just do it. I had getting been getting more and more tired of taking care of my PC, and I was like, I'm just going to get a console. The the night before I decide to buy it, it's twelve a.m. I check the price; it's still three hundred dollars. And like every every retailer, Best Buy, like every single one, they all had it for three hundred. Two hours later, I'm about to go to sleep. It's two a.m. and it's three fifty. They <laughs> raise the price. The and I could see across every website, every retailer, that the uh, sales were ending. So I'm like, this is crazy. I have to buy it right now for three hundred dollars. I see that Target still has it on sale at two ninety nine, and Best Buy will do a, will do price matches with large retailers. So I call up Best Buy and I'm like, I, I you see. You called them at two a.m. Yes, and they picked up. The customer service picked up Best Buy, <laughs> and I was like, well, actually, the deal at Best Buy had become. It's three fifty, and you get a fifty dollar Best Buy gift card. So it's still kind of two ninety nine, but you have to pay three fifty up front, and then use the fifty dollar gift card on something else. Right. That's really annoying. So I was like, "Can you please price match this?" I understand if I can't get the gift card, but I'd rather spend the three hundred now than spend three fifty. And Best Buy price matched for two ninety nine the Nathan Drake bundle, and gave me the fifty dollar gift card. So it was like it was two fifty. Nice. And that was my story. Yeah. It was crazy. It was down to the wire, man. In, be- <laughs> in between the phone call with the, be- with the Best Buy associate, Target changed their website. So it was no longer three <laughs> two ninety nine. It was crazy. Yeah. So anyway, I have a PS4. I've had one for a month or two. It's pretty great. And I've been waiting for more information about PSVR. Um and then this past week, they announced a release date and a price. I don't, have you read about it at all? No, I haven't had a chance. Yeah, so it's going to be three ninety nine. dollars um, It's not bad. Yeah, and it's coming out in October. And just for reference, I don't know if you guys talked about this. I, I mean, you mentioned it before, but the, HT, the HTC Vive is seven ninety nine. Right. And the Oculus Rift is uh, five ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So it's coming in well below... But uh, but the specs are obviously not as good as the um, as the as the Vive or the Oculus. Um, I don't know. So, have you tried any VR headsets at all? Uh, Oculus. You did. Mm-hmm. What can you tell? When did you? Uh, twenty fourteen San Diego Comic Con. Oh yeah. Did you do the? What did you do? The Eve Valkyrie or whatever. It was a Pacific Rim demo. Oh, cool. Yeah. It was cool. So yeah, it was really cool. It's, you've seen Pacific Rim, right? Uh, I saw like the last half of it. Oh god! Yeah, I know. I missed that one. Uh, well, it, it's yeah. It's if you when you see the beginning, it's like when his br- basically when his brother dies. It's that part of the movie, but from I'm always going to call him Jax because that's who he is in Sons of Anarchy. I don't remember. Exactly. Don't remember his name in Pacific Rim. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, it's from his point of view, and it was like a two minute demo, and it was really cool. Like it was really cool. Yeah. Was that the the dev kit? Yeah, yeah. Like it's this was two years ago, so it was like, you know, not nearly what they're putting out now. Yeah. Do you remember which dev kit it was? Because there was dev kit one and then dev kit two. Um, I want to say it was one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My company actually gave all of us or. T- all of us? Yeah, they gave all the employees at the time. There was or all the devs, but there was only like four or five. They gave us all uh, dev kit twos from Oculus. 
Wow. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I only I only actually ended up using it a little bit because it was pretty cumbersome and hard to use. Um, but there's this game called uh, Elite Dangerous. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. have it. Yeah, for the for the uh, listeners who may not know, Elite Dangerous is a uh, a uh, f- space flight simulator. It's um, and it's also like kind of MMOE, right? Mm, kind of. They, they basically instance everything so you're not like you can play with other players but you kind of have to arrange it it's not like a regular mmo where you are constantly surrounded by other people okay um but playing that in oculus rift dude i would spend and i'm actually thinking about doing this don't tell my girlfriend because she'll kill me (laughs) i mean she kind of already knows already like i would spend like the 1600 dollars on a really nice pc plus the 600 dollars on a really nice on the oculus just to play that one fucking game in vr because that's how (laughs) it is it's so transformative and god dude oh my god it's crazy yeah that's if you ever oh god if you ever get the chance like it's so amazing yeah that I, cause we, I think, I mean, I'll be on the low wind, but I'll be able to run an Oculus on my yeah. rig. Do you, what, uh, GPU do you have? Um, I've got a, you know, let me pull up the specs. Is it AMD? Yeah, it's an AMD. Oh, okay. Um, I'm never buying AMD ever again. It was good for uh, the, it was good. Uh, no, the price, the price is always great, but you always get, and you always end up getting bitten in the ass by the shitty drivers. I've definitely had some driver issues, that is for sure, especially with Windows 10. Like, Windows 10 yeah. has been a been a. Yeah, I bitch. was having blue screens of death. Do what? Um, I was having uh, blue screens of death on their shitty drivers. But blue screen of death, they were... It was making my computer all fucked up. Yeah. Uh, so, but... Luckily, it's I, luckily it's calmed down. Yeah. So I'll run through my specs here real quick. Okay. So I've got an ASUS Pro R2 motherboard, um, a Sapphire Vapex Vapor X Radeon R9 270. Okay. I've got two of those cross-fired. Oh, okay. Then you should be fine. Um, I, and I got the AMD FX. 8350 Black Edition, a core, 4 gigahertz. AMD? Huh? Yeah, the AMD. I don't know how that would run, how that's compared to whatever processor they want. It was, but a, I guess it was, I mean, it compares well to a lot of the last generation i7s before, like mm. the brand new generation. And I'm running uh, 32 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Okay. Do you know how many USB ports you have? Uh, on the front two and on the back, I want to say like five, four. Yeah, because apparently you need at least four USB 3.0 ports. USB 3.0 ports. Four of them. Four? I thought it was just two. Maybe. I don't know. I should check. Maybe it's two and one USB 2.0. I don't remember. But it's crazy. You need like a lot of USB ports. Um. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would make sure like that you're that it's up to snuff before you spend the six. Oh months. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm sure they there's like an Oculus Rift, you know, yeah, tester tool. Website. Yeah. 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 For did, sure. Did you also? They have. Uh, we'll get. I'm sure we'll, we'll get back to PSVR in a minute. But did you see? Um, they they're selling Oculus Ready PCs, de- desktop PCs. Yeah, I've seen that. They're, they're actually some of them are actually pretty good deals. Um, and especially, go, go, ahead, go ahead. I, I saw somebody was selling an Oculus specific graphics card that had the extra USBs built oh, in. Shit. So basically, what I did is you put the put the graphics card in the back, and it had another thing that went into one of your SATA slots with uh, like a, like a US like two, two USB 3.0 slots that you could just hook directly into. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, obviously, it was a beefy graphics card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting, you know, all this um, all this stuff. And they've been saying this would be a thing for 20 years, and now it's finally yeah, here. I think, 
I think even now it's still pretty early. Uh, like it's still like all these systems, except well, except for the PSVR, they're all going to be in pre-order for a long time, and the uh, the the inventory is going to be super low. Right, but this is the first time where there's been a major push into the homes with virtual reality. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's never been anything like this before. That's true. Well, except for the what's it called the the game the Nintendo thing. Oh, Virtual Boy. Yeah, <laughs> thing was awesome. I love Virtual Boy. Uh, uh, so, so PSVR. Um, there's a uh, so yeah. So the uh, the thing about PSVR that's interesting is even though it's a lower cost, the fact that the P- the PlayStation Four only has like so much processing power. And, um, like, people are wondering what kind of games is the PSVR actually going to be able to render. Um, and so there's, I don't know how you've heard of Google Cardboard, right? Yeah. yeah and, the, and the Samsung Gear VR. Yeah. It's kind of like PSVR is in a, is in a mid place between Oculus and Samsung VR. Okay, so I mean, it's going to. There's going to be a lot of people adopt that because they can just buy it and plug it in their place. Oh yeah, shit. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it like crazy because eh? <laughs> it's so. It's like so much cheaper, and it's just so much. You, that's the thing about uh, PS4. I might not be able to play all the games I want in the way that I want. Like I can with the PC. I, I prefer mouse and keyboard for FPS. Um, but it's just so much easier. You just turn it on and start playing games, and you don't have to worry about shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, God, especially when it comes to, like streaming games. Mm-hmm. It's really easy. Um, but yeah, I, I think the PSVR is going to do pretty well because of its price point, definitely. Right, and it's like, oh, I can just... It's sort of like, you know, instead of buying like a PS5 or whatever, it's like, yeah. oh, I'll just spend a couple hundred bucks on this and try it out. Yeah. Because at that, you know, was it 400 bucks? The PSVR, yeah, yeah, it's four hundred bucks. I mean, that's well, a... well, go ahead. It, it's four hundred, but apparently you need the PlayStation camera. That's like another sixty or forty, and then if you want the full functionality, you have to get PlayStation Move controllers, and I don't know how much they cost. Oh, uh, you know they'll like... bundle all that together for like yeah, four hundred fifty yeah. bucks. But still, that's it's... that's a good price point. It's, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's. Yeah. Not too hard to save up that much. No, it's and and you don't need a gigantic, powerful computer. Like like I, I've priced it out, and including the six hundred dollars for an Oculus, you know, you're gonna have to spend like at least if you're building from scratch, you're gonna have to spend at least twelve hundred bucks on a PC. Like the minimum supported graphics card on the Nvidia side is a nine seventy, and that alone is three hundred dollars. Right. So. A 970, that's almost the entire cost of the PSVR alone. Um, right, yeah. but yeah, but you know, it's one of those things like that Oculus is going to look amazing. <laughs> it's know? true. It's true. It is going to look, but that's the other thing. Like, how, and people have been asking this question if you buy a 970, how long is that going to be able to play the games in on Oculus that you want to play? Probably not that long. Um, People, you know, people might be getting screwed by buying the minimum supported graphics card now. So, if you really want to be safe, you go with like a 980 Ti. That's 650 bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those those things are huge. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Really, like, like I probably won't buy it, but I really want to. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm also I mean, like. Like six hundred bucks, Jesus! <laughs> and yeah, it's crazy, but the experience I think is going to be awesome. Oh yeah, hopefully it's going to be all you know, like holodeck and Ready Player One and shit happening. Mm-hmm. Well, the H- that's the HTT the HTT vibe. That's even crazier. Like you have to have a whole room in your house in order to use that shit. Because of the the spatial awareness, it's crazy. Right, I would love like that. Sounds super cool to me. Like it, the there's, this, there's this great animated GIF that I saw of uh, this guy. I don't know. He's playing some game. I'm not sure what it was, but there was this part in the game where like he's lifting a ceiling tile. 
he's like he's like on top of the ceiling. So like in the ceiling, mm-hmm. and he's lifting a ceiling tile to go like through the ceiling into the room below it. And he lifts the ceiling t- in the game. He lifts the ceiling tile off, and he's trying to put his head through the ceiling, and he hits the floor in real life. <laughs> and it's, it's hilarious. So, I mean, yeah, the, with really good VR, the, it can really trick your brain into thinking, you know, that that's real. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, just my little experience with the Oculus was enough to prove that to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, VR is cool stuff. <laughs> it is, and yeah, it's just you know, like t- a year or less after it comes out, you're gonna hear all the horror stories about the people who go in and basically never come out. Yeah, people have been talking about that, and about how like we're gonna discover new psychological like <laughs> illnesses and stuff that may we may never have seen before because and and there'll be like tons of extra cases of like disassociative. Uh, I don't know what you know syndrome or whatever because because of that. I guess it remains to be seen. Yeah, it's gonna be like you know when Wow when Evercrack were huge and all those <laughs> terrible like oh my god your child's gonna die stories. Yeah, yeah I'm mean, people did die. Did we talk about this on the last show? Mm-hmm. Like people legit died. Oh, I know people legit died. Yeah. I mean, but still, you know what I mean. Like there were so <laughs> many terrible stories about how like terrible Wow was and. Ever, mm-hmm. ever quest, and those I guess were the two really big ones that really just destroyed people's lives. Mm-hmm. And I lost friends to WoW, like just never saw them again. Like, yeah, I yeah. could never get into it. I tried. I was into it for a while, um, never at that level where it's like you're. That's all you're doing. But I could understand. It was very easy to understand why that was happening to people because you have to, in order to see everything that the game offers, you have to put a certain amount of time, like a lot of time, like three days a week into it. Uh, yeah. So it's basically your second job. For some people. I mean, not three days, but like like three nights a week, you people would would do it pretty religiously. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't know. RP, like, especially MMOs, just never done a thing for me yeah i mean different strokes for different folks right yeah yeah did you ever get into D? uh yeah i played D right now yeah uh oh, actually yeah. it's like i really just started playing right when we moved to pittsburgh so i've only been playing for like a year and a half mm-hmm. you know, what it's, edition uh 5e yeah okay it's fun you know we just started the new season for adventures league which is what is that um i don't know but it's all like vampires and goth and <laughs> it seems pretty fun you know new things yeah 5v is interesting yeah everyone says it's a lot easier than any of the previous editions so mm-hmm. but i don't really know because i never really played it so. yeah it's definitely a lot more simplified one of these days i'm actually gonna play the dresden rpg yeah, I, we should we should do that. Um, I've wanted. I actually had a uh, an idea. You want to hear it? It's like a like a mini one shot campaign. Okay. Um, it would take place during World War Two, and it starts off with basically the whole idea is like it's to introduce players to the game, even though I've never actually DM'd it. <laughs> and, and like, so you're introducing characters as the story goes on. And the, it starts with the first character is a is a grizzled African American soldier who's been separated from his unit, and he gets attacked by a ghoul, and then gets saved by a an apprentice wizard, and on and on and on. Yeah, gonna be yeah. more characters, but <laughs> nice. Yeah, anytime you want to play, I already have my fate dice. Yeah, I, I have to fly out to Pittsburgh basically. I'll right? just do it over Skype. Yeah, well, they have Roll Twenty um, dot net. It's an yeah. online thing, my Bob. Is level Twenty dot net. Roll, roll Twenty, like a D Twenty. Level uh, Twenty. And uh, yeah, you can. I've never actually tried it, but I heard it's pretty good. It's. Uh, Ooh. It looks fancy. It's free too, I think. <laughs> Looks, 
I don't look free, but it might be. Uh, roll 20 for mm -hmm. Android, iPad. It's free to sign up. Huh, interesting. I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people play or just play over Skype. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could, like, have a, uh, a, a, a RPG Twitch channel going. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun, yeah. It's not because, like, I got my older brother the, uh, the, all the books and stuff for it. We're like, yeah, we're going to play and do all this. We never did. Oh, the books for the Dresden Files? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he, yeah I, I got him into Dresden Files, and he's an addict, too, now. Yeah. So. yeah. It's, it's a good series. It is a good series. Uh, okay, so I want to depart, since we're seems like we're petering out here. Okay. All right, so... This, I, is this is it. So <laughs> we were at dinner a week ago Thursday, and me and my wife were talking to the bartender, and the bartender asked us, "Do you, which do you like more, Marvel or DC?" And my wife immediately spit out Marvel. But my first thought was, "Well, that's a complicated question. <laughs> what are we talking here? Movies, TV, books, games." comics so i thought it'd be fun since we always t seem to end up on the opposite sides of things to t have this discussion mm -hmm. so where do you well, want to huh i i mean yeah i thought because i thought you were solid marvel i thought you were like 100 percent. no i i am not no i i go back and forth depending on where we are uh, okay this is gonna be fun then all right so let's start with Let's let's get comics out of the way. So comics, Marvel. Well, I DC. just I just want to start with if they if, if if DC Comics was deleted from reality and never actually existed, I would be fine with that. Now please continue with what you were saying. <laughs> well, I mean, but completely fine with that. But then, so you you no, really no. don't like DC at all, do you? All right. I enjoy the Arrowverse shows. I'm I'm really enjoying. Well, I I mean, the Flash is getting kind of stale. Um, and I, Green Arrow still. I mean, Arrow still okay. I don't know. I never really read any of the comics, but it it always seemed like the the heroes were really just terrible and boring, and the villains are the only thing that's cool about DC comics. That seems, and, and it seems the opposite for Marvel, where the yeah. heroes are really interesting. I would say over the last long, long stretch, DC has been the better, better television. Yes, uh, especially with comics. I mean, with with animated. Um, right, you know, because you got yes. Batman the animated series going yeah. way back in the way back, which is amazing. Yeah. If you haven't it watched is. it, go. It's on. I have. Oh no! I'm just talking to podcast people. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, go watch Heart of Ice, and you'd be Which like, "What oh, was that? Is it that was the one with the freeze? first Mister Freeze episode?" Yeah. Yes. It's like you're like, this was meant for eight year olds. No wonder yeah. it did poorly. Yeah, that's actually where Harley Quinn was introduced. Too. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah, it's one one of the only, and now she's like one of the biggest mm -hmm. people out there. Like, I probably watched that show as like an 11 year old like sat on Saturday morning and never realized that like Harley Quinn is being introduced like I probably watched the episode the first time it aired oh yeah no she idea. wasn't supposed to ever come back mm -hmm. you know so that's kind of funny do you, mm -hmm. do you ever um, do you ever listen to Fat Man on Batman mm, oh that's uh, Kevin Smith no because like I said earlier, if DC was erased from reality, I'd be well, like, no, I never listened to it. You should at least listen to the first like eight or ten episodes because they're all dedicated to Batman the Animated Series. Okay. So they have Mark Hamill for two episodes. Oh, which is, wow. Yeah, they talk for three hours and never mention Star Wars. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, they have Kevin Conroy. Wait, uh, who, what, who was he? Batman. Bad name some. Oh, okay. So he he was Batman, um, and he's been. He was every he was every voice of Batman for like twenty years or something yeah. like that. Yeah. The only the only and he did the Arkham games, but um, and then they have Paul Dini, who oh they had him on the show. 
Oh yeah, he's been on yeah. it a bunch of times. Yeah. Bruce Tim was on there. Who's that? What does he do? Uh, he's the guy who really created. He's well, he's in charge of DC Animator right now. Okay. And he really created sort of the art style, and you know was one of the producers of the show. Um, I actually watched that podcast done live at Comic Con 2012. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think you know DC easily wins the TV. But if Marvel keeps up what they're doing, they you know they just don't have a long enough track record yet. But, you know, Daredevil's been amazing. Jessica Jones is amazing. Well, Marvel Netflix. Yeah. What do you think about Agent Carter? Did we talk about this already? I have not actually watched Agent Carter. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the first season. The second season, nah, I don't know. It kind of got really not so good, I guess. I, I, a lot of people really enjoyed it. Maybe I just need to give it another shot. But I, we talked about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. already. Oh, my God. It's still amazing. Like it's still rolling and <sighs> so good. I'll get caught up on it eventually. Got to dude. It's so good. <laughs> he, like it's three seasons in almost. Well, they're in the middle of their third season, and it's it's still really good. Um, but yeah, definitely on the on the television front, Marvel has a lot of catching up to do. Right. And yeah, like you said, like th- especially on the animated side. They're uh, they're so good. Like, like I, I, I was it right at the right age where I was like, cartoons are stupid when Batman Beyond came out. Oh yeah, and I've yeah. come back to it. And I'm like, oh my god, this show is amazing. <laughs> now that also was um, it, for me. Was, so wait, maybe I didn't watch. I no wait, the animated series must have been on before. Was there a second Batman the animated series? There was. Like a Batman and Superman adventures, which was sort of the tail end of Batman and before Batman Beyond. Now I'm thinking maybe, maybe I was actually not. Maybe I'm thinking of a different show. No, ninety ninety two. Okay, so I probably wasn't watching that episode when it first aired. It might have been like reruns. Um. But but Batman Beyond was on around the time that I was definitely watching Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, it was so like it's so good. I was shocked. Yeah, yeah it's good. Um, you see that they're doing the Killing Joke animated. Uh yeah yeah it's is coming out or it, it is is it coming on they, Netflix? Uh, I don't know where they're releasing it, but they 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 got the permission to go for an R rating. Which you kind of have to with Killing Joke. Mm -hmm. That was. Have you read Killing Joke? Mm, I think that's the origin story of. um, Right? Of. um, uh, What's his name? The Joker? No. uh, No. What What am I thinking of? I know I've heard of it before. Like, Killing Joke was hard for me to get through. Okay. Like I was reading it, and I'm like, "Oh God, this is." Oh, this is this is where, what happens to Barbara Gordon? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. It's pretty yeah, rough. and it's fucked up, man. Yeah. Beyond fucked up. <laughs> no wait, it is. It is. It does have the origin story of well, okay, the so, Joker. Yeah, but it was. I I really didn't think of it as like the main origin story. For yeah. Me. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, but again, like, so they have DC has some of these really good stories, and then that's it. It's like, Marvel has so much cool shit, you know. Yeah, well, Marvel also, you know, gets literally seems they just get crazy with it. Like, oh yeah, space and magic and. <laughs> no, I would say the same thing about DC. DC, it's like they, uh, it's all cosmic shit. <laughs> I mean, Martin the Manhunter is, uh, he's Martian. <laughs> he's Martian. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, I don't know. I always feel like DC, especially recently, is playing catch up with the comics. Like, oh, Marvel's doing so well, so we have to do something crazy to try and sell <laughs> things, and they just never do it. Yeah. Like, it just seems to fall flat. 
I mean, I'll be honest. I'm not a huge but like most of my comic knowledge comes from <laughs> reading Wikipedia. So that's the honest truth. Um, but I have, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar. So I, I don't know. I, what, like, can you give me an example? Oh, well, it's just like, like Marvel was doing really well. Oh, heck. I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm not huge into comics anymore, but you know, it's like the MCU happened. And DC's like, holy shit, we got to do Justice League. And, oh, you yeah, know, they yeah. just seems like we throwing shit in there. Just like, yeah. it's like, and we're going to make somebody gay, but not the real one. We're going to put him <laughs> in a pocket dimension or, you know, Earth 2. Like, come on, guys. Yeah, Warner Brothers must really be kicking themselves for allowing um, Christopher Nolan to talk them out of making the wider DC universe because they're really screwed now. Like the, the dark Knight movies were amazing, but that was like, like a decade, right. Or a lot of years where they could have been building that up and they chose not to. And then that was all kind of not wasted because they were great movies, but they can't really take any of that and use it. Batman begins was 11 years ago. Oh yeah. Started to feel old, man. Yeah. It was. I mean, it is an older movie now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's crazy balls. Um, yeah. So you know, so they do that. Yeah, like you're saying, they wasted some time. But I mean, granted, Marvel took a pretty big risk with, with the MCU, which paid off because they got bought out. Oh, out dude, of- that, dude, have you ever heard the stories about um, John Favreau? He was the director of Iron Man, and Robert Downey Jr. No, I haven't. Like, like, they had no scripts going into Iron Man, the first movie. And it was mostly Robert Downey Jr. just improvising and John Favreau directing him. And, and like, sing, like, well, double-handedly, they saved the, the movie and launched the Marvel franchise. Like, yeah. that movie could have been a total fucking failure if it wasn't Robert Downey Jr. being amazing. Well, he was basically playing himself for fuck's yeah, sake. <laughs> it worked, but I mean, how many actors could do could pull that off? It's, it's true, and yeah. you know that relaunched his career. Mm-hmm. You know, and he he was taking it seriously enough that you know it 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 was like wow, this is like an actual movie with ca- characters we care about and things that make sense. And like when I I, I remember. Um, when I first saw Iron Man, it was in theaters, and I was watching with my friends, and I was like, it was like the first time I saw a superhero or a movie based on comic books where I was like, wow, I'm like, this is actually a really cool movie. <laughs> like, this is actually really good. Like he's driving in the desert with the, like with the uh, in the Humvee, and it's like this is funny, and it really impressed me. Yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, I was shocked. Green, I did like the Ed Norton Hulk movie, which apparently no one else did. I blocked it out of my memory. I don't even. Have, like, you should go back it. and watch it. It's better yeah, than you remember. Uh, I promise. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wish they'd make a Mark Ruffalo Hulk movie because he's perfect for the Hulk. Isn't? Aren't they eventually going to do it, or have they scrap that? Uh, it... I don't know. I think there may have been there. They were talking about a Planet Hulk movie. Because did you did you read Civil War? I have not read Civil War, no. So, in the lead up to Civil War, and this actually happened in Age of uh, Ultron, so they could have put this in. Maybe they will. The Hulk, dest- well, in in the uh, MCU, the Hulk like destroys New York City on a rampage. So, at the beginning of the Civil War, um, the Avengers are like, are basically like, okay, Bruce Banner, Hulk, uh, things are getting really hot around here, so we're just going to launch you into space. <laughs> And they launch the Hulk into space, and then there's a series called Planet Hulk, where <laughs> the, the planet that the Hulk lands on, he like becomes the in charge of it. And they were going to make a movie about that. Yeah, so I'm looking at the timeline. It's going to be Civil War, Guardians 2, Thor, Avengers Infinity War Part 1, Captain Marvel, The Inhumans, on an untitled Marvel film. Yeah, there's a couple of untitled after that. Oh, sorry, I was reading this wrong. Here we go. So it's Civil War, Doctor Strange, 
Guardians 2, Spider-Man, Thor, Black Panther, Avengers Part 1, Ant-Man and Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Part 3, Inhumans, and then if this is still a thing in four years, three <laughs> untitled movies. Right. <laughs> They're actually talking about not making the Inhumans movie because, well, they still could do it, but because th- that was kind of cannibalized by the show, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um. I, who, I really, really wish. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go it's ahead. like who, who, like who knows? Maybe Fox will have flopped enough that X Men will be back in Marvel's I, hands. I really hope so. I really, and the Fantastic Four. I wish they would pull a Sony and just say, "Okay, we're terrible at this. Here's your properties back." They would make more money at this point. Well, maybe not. I mean, Spider Man makes they make shit tons of movies. Every X Men movie they make. I I don't know. I wish it's uh, the thing about the X Men movies is they're actually pretty good. Um, I mean, they're class is good. yeah, they're either really good or really bad. I mean, First Class and Days of Future Past were really good. Days of Future Past was okay. I mean, that's think it's really good. They had plot holes big enough to drive a Buick through, man. Well, every time travel, well, like what though? Well, you all the time it? travel stuff was yeah. pretty iffy. You're just like, I just I don't, I don't know. know. Didn't feel that it. was a fun movie. It was good. I, I love the scene with the better uh, Quicksilver that they have. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing, like, especially Fox, cause like, oh, look, Deadpool did so well. Let's make some R-rated superhero movies. Yeah. You yeah. know? So I could see Fox trying to fill that niche. I mean, they, they couldn't even... I mean, th- Okay, so taking it back to DC versus Marvel, I guess this is one of the things that... DC has over Marvel. Like, they can use whatever properties they want, I guess. They couldn't even get the fucking um, Osborn Tower in the Avengers movie in the background where nobody would notice it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because of how... Because, you know, Mar- Marvel originally was licensing movies yes, instead of making them. Yes. And so they licensed Spider-Man and X-Men and Fantastic Four. And so... Because I actually watched this really interesting like mini documentary on how all this stuff works. Mm-hmm. It's all about how like if if a character is mainly perceived to be a part of a certain universe, a certain comic series, they belong to that whoever they belong to the most. So while even though Kingpin plays a lot a big part in Spider Man. He's more related to Daredevil, so Marvel has Kingpin. <laughs> it's it's weird. Like I'll have to send them to you. They're, they're pretty good. Okay. But I'll check that out. Uh, yeah. So so I so Doctor Doom is obviously Fantastic Four. So he's with Fantastic Four, and then so you have these really weird semi characters that like float between all of them and so those are always in really weird nebulous kind of spaces it's uh it's weird dude yeah and it's really annoying <laughs> yeah you know time warner owns dc and so they just made their own movies mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know they had they had the means to make them into movies and they god they've been making superhero movies for 30 years now 30 yeah. plus years yeah, 40 years. Was, well, I guess... W- wait, what do you mean D- Warner Brothers said? Warner, Warner Brothers... Um, oh, yeah, I guess they didn't make... It was... Uh, what's his production studio? Christopher Nolan. It's... Um, no, where, did, wait, Dark Knight... It must have been published by Warner Brothers. Yeah, they're the... Whatever. But, I mean, they've been doing those kind of... I mean, the first Superman movie was in 78. So, I mean, they've been making superhero movies for almost 40 years now yeah it's been a while it's been a while so movies dc (laughs) or marvel i mean obviously uh that's actually tough because i really really like all of the dark knight movies all of them even dark knight rises i i love christopher nolan i really like dark knight rises yeah a lot of people didn't but uh I mean, if you take all the really good Marvel movies, this is tough, dude. Yeah, this. It's not because I like Batman. It's because I like Christopher Nolan and the way he tells stories and directs movies. This is this is tough. 
I, I'd have to say Marvel. If we're talking specifically about, like, I don't know. You go first. Okay, so I think until the MCU started, it was DC. I don't even remember any DC movies that happened before. I mean, except for the other Batman movies. No, well, I mean, let's see. There's the Superman movies from a long time ago. Right. But you also have to remember DC is... Um, Batman Begins and Dark Knight... Bat, Dark Knight came out the same year as the first Iron Man. So there was really two movies there before the MCU started. Right. Um, but you also take, like, take in, you know, the Dark Horse movies, like the original Sin City I thought was really good. Watchmen was really good. Uh, I never really read Watchmen, so I kind of went into it like... I didn't read Watchmen either, and I still thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it was good. It was a good movie. I, I like Zack Snyder. He's good. Yeah, I, I like him too. Yeah. So, you, you know... And then the Batman movies were better. I'm trying to think. There were more DC movies. I mean, after Batman, there's been uh, Man of Steel. The, that was, I mean, it was okay. It's kind of I boring. Thought, I thought it was a good movie. I've, I've watched it two or three times now. Um, I like, I, again, you have to really like Zack Snyder, I guess. And I love has, Zack Snyder. Like, yeah. I, I think he's really good. I but, think it's a it's a it's kind of jarring because you have Christopher Nolan producing and you can tell he's like leaning on Zack Snyder to to try and tell the story in Christopher Nolan's way, mm-hmm. but Zack Snyder's trying to tell the story in Zack Snyder's way, and they just kind of smash up against each other. Like it's really dark and grim, but it's also really action packed and, and you know, right, right. Um... So then you have like you have the Batman movies from the 80s and 90s. You have Constantine in 2005. I never uh, saw that. I like it. Yeah. It's not it's not a great movie, but it's fun. I did not realize Constantine and Batman Begins were the same year. You have V for Vendetta. Oh, that was uh, DC. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it's Dark Horse technically, okay. but uh, yeah, I mean it's DC. The Losers was pretty fun. See, but you're counting stuff that's not really DC. It's like, owned by DC. It's under like, the umbrella. If you're comparing MCU to DC. Well, no, but I'm also thinking about, like, the Fox movies, too. The yeah. Fox and... Because, like, Spider-Man 1 and 2 were, were really good. I really <laughs> like Spider-Man 2. The, the, hey. the Tobey Maguire ones, not the, not the new Spider-Man ones. I don't think so. I never thought Spider-Man, any of the Spider-Man movies were very good. Uh, um, I, I really liked I really liked Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 3 was awful. I, I mean, I, I guess I liked them at the time, but like thinking back now and being spoiled by the amazing MCU movies, it's just like, what were we thinking? <laughs> well, granted, I have not gone... I have not watched Spider-Man 2 since I saw it in the theaters. Uh-huh. So maybe if I went back and watched it, I would think differently. Maybe. Um, that's, oh, wow. It's been, it must have been a long time then. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, when was the first Spider-Man? 2000, or 2000, I'm pretty sure it's... No, it had to be... 2002. 2000, I was about to say it had to be after 9-11 because they had to take the Twin Towers right. out. They didn't have to, but they did. I, I think the only great things about those movies was J.K. Simmons. He's great. <laughs> He's amazing. God, what a guy. Uh, then you had you know, X1 and X2 were pretty decent movies. X3 hey. was terrible. <laughs> yeah, X, I actually I don't know if I ever saw X-Men 3 because X-Men 1 is okay. X, the next one is not so good, and then at that point, I'm always just like, I don't, I don't really want to watch the next movie. Well, yeah, and I'm trying to think. Grant, these more movies I haven't seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. But then you know you've got First Class, which I thought was amazing. fantastic, definitely. But all the Fantastic Four movies are terrible. All terrible. of them across the board. I terrible. think I've only seen the first one. 
See, they had great casting, but just terrible everything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. And it sucks, because those are some of the best characters in the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. At least Mr. Fantastic and um, The Thing. They went... The Thing is one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah, I was actually... For a while, we had the Marvel Unlimited subscription. So I was, I was reading through a lot of Fantastic Four. Wait, not The Thing. What am I... Human Torch? No, The Thing. They call him The Thing. Yeah, The, the thing. thing, yeah. Yes. The big rock dude. Did, did you know he's Jewish? <laughs> it's it's really funny. Ben <laughs> Grimm is Jewish. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, since the MCU has started, Marvel has been crushing DC. Yeah. And I don't remember if I said this on the last show, but it it's tr- like I just hope they can keep it up. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I hope they can keep it up because it sounds like they're starting to... Like the things that made the original Marvel movies great were the risks that they took, especially the first Iron Man movie. And it sounds like they're willing to take less and less risks as the movies get more and more popular. So, well, you also know. have to remember. Well, let's see when. The, I'm trying to remember when Disney bought Marvel. 2009, I think. Um. Yeah, 2009. So. And it was that was probably around the same time as Iron Man. Iron Man was two thousand eight. But that but, means that the movie was in development for like two or three years before that point. Right. So you're probably talking almost all of the first phase under Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Because if it's bought in August of 2009 iron man 2 is already in production so is thor so is captain america but we've seen disney has the ability at least for the most part to kind of lay off like with star wars the force awakens the story is that jj abrams was like totally he had total free reign right but you Um, but you're starting to see the same sort of decline that people are worried about with pixar yeah, and you can tell that they're starting to like really do too much with Pixar. Yeah, I mean, because he, I mean, it it feels like there's like two crap movies for every good movie now. Yeah. Like it used to, you know, they had what ten straight pits or whatever it was. Yeah, it's been it's been a while since I've seen a Pixar movie. Inside Out was really good. I know. I need to see it. I, it and it's weird too because it, it it sounds like Disney's animated stuff, not Pixar, that like Frozen and and other movies, are starting to take over for Pixar's. Successes. It feels that way. It almost feels like a lot of people from Pixar were moved into Disney. That's what yeah. it feels like. Just watching the movies. Like, it, there was this short that came out really recently. Uh, wait a minute, I'm going to look it up. It, it actually won the Academy Award for Best... Uh, it's called Feast. Is that the one with the dog? Yeah. 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 Dude, I cried so hard. <laughs> Cause, and I didn't... It wasn't really the, the the plot or the substance of the of the, the the short. It was just... It was so amazingly crafted. And you could tell that so much talent and work went into this, like, 10-minute th- short. And I was just overwhelmed. I was like, I can't believe human beings... Like... Uh, there's so so much talent. You know yeah, that I mean? was uh, before Inside Out, I think. Okay. It's just like... like yeah. It's such a good idea to tell that story. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good, yeah. Like, who the fuck thinks of that? <laughs> God. People who have time to just think shit up and then animate it. I guess so, man. <laughs> like, I think of a lot of things. I just don't have the time to actually do anything with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Six minutes. It was six minutes long, but it felt like a full-length movie. I don't know. Oh, it was with Big Hero 6. Oh, it was Big Hero Six. And, yeah, because it wasn't Pixar. Okay, yeah, that was that was a fun movie, Big Hero Six. Yeah. That's another one I miss. I gotta see it. 
You know, Big Hero Six was Marvel. No, no, no. I guess I knew it was a, I knew it was a comic. I didn't didn't realize it was Marvel. I thought yeah. it was just, I thought it was like a uh, manga. No, it was Marvel. Huh. Yeah. There you go. Maybe they'll get pulled into the MCU. If... <laughs> <laughs> well, people are saying that about Star Wars. <laughs> That'd be crazy, right? I don't want them to actually pull it in, but I think it'd be hilarious if there was, like, you could just see the the ship from Guardians of the Galaxy, like, in the background, mm-hmm. sort of an Easter egg, you know? I think that would be hilarious. Did, did you ever watch Parks and Rec? I've tried. I've tried uh, to watch it three or four times. All right. I'll, I'll really quickly summarize this, because it's funny. There's this episode where the main character, um, Leslie Nope, <laughs> She, there's like the town has like this really really old stupid law and she's trying to get it repe- uh, repealed and Patton Oswalt plays this you know who Patton Oswalt is yeah I mean kid. I know the characters yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he plays this character who like is trying to keep the law and so he filibusters the the town council meeting and the way he filibusters it is by reading this really long speech about Marvel and Star Wars and how they're going to converge on each other. It's really <laughs> funny. There's an extended cut on YouTube of it. It's so funny. You uh, uh, it. Like, I love like the stuff I see online from it. I think it's mm-hmm. hilarious, but mm-hmm. I just I can't get into it. And I've tried. You know, a suggestion would be to to like like. Go as much as you can through the first season, because the second season is when it gets really good. Right, and you know I've <laughs> tried. Right. I don't know. I just no, the, the first season is a different kind of humor. It's it's like super cringe humor, but it gets much easier after the second season. I mean, it's gonna be one of those shows where I just gonna have to like sit down at mm-hmm. like as soon as I get home from work on Friday mm-hmm. and just power through mm-hmm. until I just, just can't the, stay. Just right the first season. It's like six episodes. And then the second season starts, and you're like, oh, okay, this is great. Oh, man, I don't know. It's really good. Because I've, I've tried starting in the second season. <laughs> so. Yeah, really, yeah, but that's kind of difficult because then you're missing stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, well, so, like, it's one of those shows I want to like. I really, really want to like it, mm-hmm. but I can't. No, I would definitely recommend to keep trying because it, it definitely gets really good. Or, or it's another, or a, or Excuse maybe me. well, yeah, or it's sort of like Battlestar Galactica for me, which I really enjoyed. It just doesn't keep my interest. Yeah, <laughs> like I'll, I'll watch like the first five episodes of this first new season. I'm like, yeah, never got to episode <laughs> six ever. I I tried to start uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and the same thing happened. I was like, yeah, this is interesting, but this is so network TV, and I really don't want to watch this. <laughs> Well, that's another show where season one is rough. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like it. I mean, it's a typical Joss Whedon show. It really doesn't get good till season two. Mm. I mean, unlike Firefly, which was amazing from day one. But you know. yeah, don't talk about Firefly, <laughs> please. Why? Which way are you gonna rant? <laughs> oh no, I loved it. But oh, I never told you this story. Wow, it really is like I have all these new stories. Uh, <clears throat> Firefly, I was, I was really enjoying it, and there's what twelve episodes. Uh, I'm not sure how many there were once twelve or thirteen. Uh, and like, well, I guess Firefly spoilers. I don't know. I knew it was like super short. I knew that. I knew there was only so many episodes. fourteen episodes. Yeah, I knew there was fourteen episodes when I went in. <clears throat> I was watching. I was watching. I was watching. And I get to the fourteenth episode, and I'm like, I at that point I didn't. I think I forgot what episode I was on. You know how that happens sometimes. Uh-huh, yeah. And what a time to forget what episode you're on. <laughs> and so episode fourteen, getting to like the last three minutes of the episode, it, I had like a panic attack, and I was like, wait a minute, this is episode fourteen. I I check. I'm like, yeah, this is the last episode. Getting to the last three minutes, it's almost over. What the fuck? There's supposed to be some kind of wrapping up of something, some kind of ending to this fucking series, because it's about to be over forever. Nope. It just ends like there's going to be another episode right after. Wow, man. And I, I like posted this like frantic Facebook post that was like, I can't believe this is it! <laughs> like all capital letters. I didn't think it would feel this bad. It averaged almost 5 million viewers in a, an episode, and they still canceled it. Yeah. 
I mean, it was way ahead of its time. Way ahead of its time. Did you watch it in the order it was supposed to be watched in or the way order it was uh, broadcast? I, I think I watched it whatever the order Netflix. That's the way it was supposed to be. Because they, okay. they, like, I don't, I want to say like the pilot episode wasn't um, until like the ninth episode. That's weird. I, it sounds like they do that a lot. Um, because they did that to the Dresden Files too, I think. Uh, Let's uh, see here. Let's see if I can't find it. Um, but uh, yeah. Weird thing with me is like I had never heard of Firefly, right? So mm -hmm. I go to college, and my. Oh, by the way, this was like last year when I watched Firefly, like a couple months ago. So it was pretty recently. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sorry, you're saying you went to college? So I went to college and my friends are like, hey, there's this movie called Serenity. Like I'd seen some previews. But I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Sci-fi. No idea. I wouldn't yeah. go watch Serenity cold and, oh. and loved it. Oh, I absolutely good. loved it. Yeah. It's like, they're like, yeah, it was a TV show. I'm like, show me. Show me now. <laughs> no, but Serenity made it even worse because this is why Serenity made it even worse. It was an it was an okay movie, but it it would have it would have been so much better as like three seasons because they crammed so much stuff into like an hour and a half movie, and then it was like, wow, this would have been way better as three and a half seasons. Like just like uh, uh, Joss Whedon probably wanted it to be, so right. that would be even sadder. Yeah, they yeah, fucking Fox. They canceled one of my favorite new sci-fi shows a couple of years ago. Almost Human. Oh, I, uh, I had a friend I think who watched that. It was so good, and they were like, they were legit about it. They were yeah. killing people, like <laughs> yeah, because you know, it was like a you know sort of a buddy cop show, okay. but it was kind of dark. And there's this one where this guy is blowing people up, mm -hmm. and. This one woman they just couldn't save. So they like put her in a force field and walked away. She was boom. And you're like, wow, that's, oh, that's pretty serious. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it was really good. It was averaging like five and a half, six million views uh, an episode. And they canceled it. Yeah. And they also did it out of order. Because oh, yeah. there was a couple times we were watching, you know, like me and my wife were like, did we miss something? What's going on here? I don't know. We'll never understand how those how they work, right? Well, especially Fox. I mean, Fox seems to fuck. Especially Fox and Sci-Fi, like yeah. Like if, uh, if I were a Sci-Fi show, I would never ever want to be picked up by Fox because they're going <laughs> to kill you. They're going to murder you. Yeah. I mean, on the same on the same you know on the other side of the coin, they do take risks. Yeah, I mean, but. For whatever reason, it seems like that particular genre they just can't do. Like yeah. there's, there's somebody in management that doesn't understand the people who watch those type of shows. Well, yeah, the people who watch those type of shows normally aren't um, network viewers, right? They're nerds. I mean, like I don't like Lost was a big deal because it tied a lot of sci-fi-ish stuff into this like kind of normal drama same thing with game well game of thrones tied in you know it, it made a lot of people who don't give a shit about fantasy really care about about the series mm -hmm. yeah lost is one of those shows i've never seen oh you should you should shock on that yeah eventually i will now that i know it's over but like i just didn't want to go down that rabbit hole yeah yeah it's like because you know like is everyone I've ever known who's watched is just uh, like in college, dude. I I watched like five or six hours a day of Lost. Yeah, and I was trying to get up to speed. It was bad. And was I bad. just I've never like I'm just like it's just like just looking at a you know some heroin and going eh, maybe I yep. should put that in my veins. Yeah. Maybe I yep. should. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Almost every episode of Lost ends with a hook. Where it's like, what happens on the next episode every time, and like eighty percent of the time, it's really like you want you want to keep watching, you want to know what happens. Yeah, it, it, I knew <sighs> I knew it was addictive because like my dad, 
doesn't really get into TV. He just mm-hmm. doesn't. You know, he he's not who he is. Mm-hmm. But him and my mom started watching it, and my mom is one of those people who she's in bed by nine every night. Mm-hmm. They were staying up to like two in the morning watching Lost. I'm like, holy shit! If it's doing that to my parents, I need to stay away. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Sorry, my, it went in and out a little bit. So, like my parents, right? Like, yeah. My dad doesn't really watch TV. My mom's in bed by 9 p.m. every night. <laughs> they were staying up to like 2 in the morning mm-hmm. watching Lost. And if they if it did that to them, <laughs> it's going to destroy me. So I just. Yeah, yeah you know. it's tough. But it's a great show. It's worth it. That's At least I mean. until the last season. The last season is bullshit. That's what everybody says. Mm-hmm. And somehow we got to Lost from the, like, DC and Marvel. Well, hey, Lost was ABC, and ABC's owned by Disney, and Marvel's owned by Disney, and there you go. <laughs> Everything's owned by ABC, almost. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Disney has reach. Yeah, I- I've made this prediction before, but I've got a feeling that ne- AB- that Disney will eventually buy Netflix. Disney, mm, I don't know about that. Well, because they signed that huge deal with Netflix. Yeah. Like four or five years ago, that's just now coming into effect. And I mean, I think part of the reason why Disney does so well is because it's not owned by any of the networks. And if if Disney were to buy Netflix, then you, you wouldn't see any more Fox or NBC content on netflix probably yeah maybe i don't know but th- that, the... that's my that's my my bold prediction i don't know i don't know i i was hoping for a while that google would buy netflix i thought that oh would be really i don't cool. want that to happen at all why they, i thought that'd be awesome they don't know anything about running a thing like that no they have google play it's it's okay and youtube youtube's huge do you well, yeah but that's all like creator content you can you can buy i bought agents of shield the first season through i bought it through google play and you can watch it on youtube it's not bad um i don't know i don't know i think it'd be interesting i mean i'm i'm google is one of my biggest things so i want them to buy everything you're you're a bit of a google or mm-hmm. mm-hmm. i accept my <laughs> google overlords yeah i'm starting to now that i'm on android yes Oh, I got I got an Nexus 6P over the weekend. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I've been looking at the new Samsung, the 7, and I'm just like, oh. They're pretty nice. Yeah, but, like, I've had two Samsungs and uh-huh. hated them both. Yeah. I've had two Samsungs for a total of five weeks. I feel you, man. I've had two of them for a total of, like, like four days. I had the Note 3 for, like, three days, and I returned it. Um. Maybe like everyone's saying like their new bake of Android is really good, so no, maybe it's still not as good as regular Android stock Android. Just buy a six P. It's four twenty five right now. I might. I'm also like waiting to see the uh LG G five when it rolls out. Just buy the six P. It's four twenty five. <laughs> Just buy the six P. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean it's it's so cheap, like to get Oh, I guess if you're gonna, are you, you're on Verizon. AT and T. AT, yeah. So you're gonna sign a contract. Yeah, but like this phone, I've almost paid off. So I'm like, well, maybe I'll just keep it till it dies. So I don't mm-hmm. like because once I pay it off, there's my contract drops by like twenty bucks a month. Right. So maybe I'll just like write it out. I don't know. There's a lot of good deals on T-Mobile now. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, T-Mobile's can... not very good in Pittsburgh. Uh, well, if you yeah, because I've looked, you, I've looked at him yeah. hard. You you could do Wi-Fi calling. So if you don't get such good reception in your house, you can call over Wi-Fi. Dude, you can get. I I got four lines for a hundred four lines of unlimited data, a hundred fifty bucks a month, and they have a buy one get one free right now for the Samsung S seven. Yeah, and it comes with like the the Gear VR, the Gear VR like. Yeah. Design bot. Yeah, that's no. a really good deal, dude. That's it like is. Really... And until like two days ago, they were off also offering a free year of Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I really like T-Mobile. It's just 
from what I understand, it's really spotty here in town. Mm-hmm. And they have a thing where you can like try it for like a month, um, and then if you don't want it, you just return the phone. You should check it out. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> One of these days, like I don't know, maybe maybe they're because you know they're always getting better. I had it. I had T-Mobile in Oklahoma for a while, mm-hmm. and it was amazing when I was in a city. Mm-hmm. But I was driving in between, and I would go dead for like thirty or forty minutes. Yeah, there are parts of the country where it's rough. Yeah, maybe it'll. Maybe even though it's not supposed to be great, maybe it'll be good enough. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check it out. I'm. Uh, like I would love to switch to T-Mobile, because you know, I mean, you know, all their free, you know, the, all the things that don't count towards the data cap. Or, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. actually, that's part. That's kind of terrible because it's going against um, net neutrality. So I don't use any of that stuff. But I have unlimited data anyway. So is it? But isn't there unlimited data tiers? Like if you use so much, they drop your speed. No, it's. Comp- it's complete. Well, it's supposed to be completely unlimited. It because you can get, I think, three. Like there are tiers for less, and then they don't charge over to this. They just lower your speed. But this is unlimited 4G LTE. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Last time I looked, I don't think they had that option. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not going to have it for very long, probably. <laughs> so you should hop on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one day. Yeah, man, we're about an hour and fifteen to one end of this. Yeah. You just want to go ahead and well, we never, we never really settled it, right? Marvel uh, versus DC. Like I said, it depends. Man, yeah, it's Marvel. <laughs> Marvel's the better. I think the only clear cut winner is DC Games. Uh, yeah. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of Marvel games, so. I mean, just on the Ar- Arkham series alone. Excuse I mean. me. But then again, think about all those we were talking about last time, all those retro Marvel arcade games. Oh, right? and those are fantastic, and right. I love them. <laughs> and then you also have to deal with the uh, Superman N64 game, which is widely considered the worst oh, yeah, 64 yeah. game ever. Yes, and one of the worst video games ever. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean... I'm surprised there haven't been more game tie-ins, especially for Marvel. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised too. It's I, I think just tie-in games in general is like a dead, it's like a, it's like a dying thing because they don't sell very well, and they're never very good. Yeah. So. One thing I do like about Disney buying Star, uh, Lucas mm-hmm. is now you're starting to get all the old Lucas games on like GOG and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I've, I've already picked up X Wing versus like the X Wing and TIE Fighter games, which uh, are amazing. I even bought like a joystick for it. Really? Yeah. Dude, get Elite Dangerous. I, I already have it. Uh, so we should play sometime. I still got to figure out how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a pretty steep learning curve. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a fun stream, though. You, me, and Ryan playing um, Elite Dangerous. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do it before I move and go to the terrible Comcast internet I'm oh. getting. Yeah. So, <laughs> granted, I've had this whole long thing with Comcast. So, Com- I'm talking to Comcast yesterday. Yes. And they're like, uh, and it's like, well, okay, the faster internet you can get there is 7510 i'm like what Ooh, that's really or cool. two gigabits i'm like how much is that They're like <laughs> it's a thousand dollar install and 300 bucks a month i'm like oh my Ooh. god so if anyone wants to move next door we'll split uh, it <laughs> we'll just run an ethernet Jesus. cord from house to house yeah <laughs> that's rough dude yeah and I'm like, okay, so there's nothing in between. So, so I talk about a day, and so apparently I can actually get 150 10, which isn't great. I mean, it's nah. good down, but it's they're terrible. Probably just, they're probably just telling you that it's probably never going to be 150. Well, yeah, but if if because I have to be with a within a third of a mile of their fiber line mm-hmm. to get gigabit. 
Mm-hmm. So that means I'm not very far from actual fiber. So there's not much copper there. Mm-hmm. So that'll help. Mm-hmm. But they keep saying, I keep reading all these stories that Comcast has figured out how to push gigabit over copper. And I'm just, just give it to me already. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, I even told the girl I was talking to today, it's like, look, if you could give me one gigabit for 150 I would pay the $1,000 install fee. <laughs> That's <laughs> Even at 300 a month, I would... I'd probably do it if they if they would let me pay off the thousand dollar install across several months, like add it to the bill. I'd probably do it. Honestly, two hundred. I, I told my wife this: if it was two hundred bucks, mm-hmm. I would really heavily consider it. Mm-hmm. But three hundred, man, that's so much money. It is, <laughs> and you're probably never gonna get that speed anyway. Well, I mean, hell, yeah, I mean. It just like look. I even told them. I was, I was like, Google can do it for eighty. Why yeah. can't you? Did you ask about their business plans? They're terribly expensive. Uh, <laughs> but you get a um, lot of stuff for like you get all sorts of extra crap if you have a business plan. Mm-hmm. Like and it, uh, most most business plans are guaranteed to never be less than five percent of max and right. all that stuff. So there's. Uh, Man, <laughs> one day. It's the only problem about, like, we're moving sort of the edge of town. It's the only mm-hmm. problem with that is internet options aren't the best. <laughs> like, I would kill to keep my Fios. I feel you, man. That sucks. And especially because cause I, was, I was talking to him. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe we should get cable, right? You know, you know, would it would reduce the strain on the internet since it won't be as you know, fast, especially when I was thinking it was going to be 75, 10, mm-hmm. which I haven't been on something as slow as 75 megabits in like four years. I'm on 75 right now. <laughs> I mean, anyway. I've been on, well, well, when I first signed up with Cox internet, it mm-hmm. was 75, 20. Mm-hmm. And by the time I left my apartment, it was 150 20 and for the same price because yeah. they kept rolling out new tiers. They just kept bumping me up. And every once in a while, I get a phone call like, hey, your internet's now this. <laughs> like, cool. Like, yeah. So over the three years, it doubled in speed. But it's uh, like, well, maybe we should get TV, you know, maybe. So I was talking to him today about it. I'm like, well, so what's it going to cost me to um, – you know, get the one fifty ten with t- television. You know, because I do like to watch my sports, especially during college football season. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's not bad. It's only a hundred and forty bucks a month with the internet and two hundred twenty channels. I'm like, oh, that sounds so bad. I'm like, so it's like, are you interested in HD? I'm like, yes, yeah, obviously. No, sure, yeah. Um, with the pay per TV. Yeah, uh, well, uh, they're like, well, that's going to be an extra 20 bucks. How about DVR? Extra 20 bucks. Like, mm-hmm. So what is this going to be when it's all said and done? It's like 190 a month. How much is just the 150 10 internet? 82. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. That's how they get you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean, now that I don't um, acquire as much from the internets as I used to, mm-hmm. um, you know, my, my data usage isn't terrible, mm-hmm. so I shouldn't really deal with the cap too much. So hopefully. Hopefully not deal with the cap too much. Well, there, there, was, there was a while in there where I was really rounding out my back catalog. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was acquiring a lot. <laughs> I mean, when I, 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 when I had my own apartment for a year before I done moved back home like a loser. And um, I, I was kind of frequently checking my own bandwidth. I was regularly using like 500 gigs a month because I, I stream Netflix all day, literally and all night, literally. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that happened to me when I was working from home. I think we talked about this. Like I was yeah. constantly streaming Spotify. Yeah. And we I saw probably a 75 gig jump in our data. Mm-hmm. I even asked, like, because I, I went over the cap once or twice. It's, I also had, like, acquired all of Friends and Blu-ray quality, <laughs> so that was a pretty hefty, hefty month. But I was like, uh, can, I, uh, can I just pay for more, a bigger cap? And I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Like, Son of a bitch. It's really dumb. 
I saw one company around here. I can't get them, but they have caps. Mm -hmm. But it's three terabytes a month. Oh, that's like, a lot. Like if you if you're constantly hitting three terabytes, you probably are yeah. doing something wrong. I'd agree with that. Or running like crazy servers. I'd agree. With you're that. basically hosting. You're basically have doing a hosting farm in your closet. Yeah. There was somebody I remember reading that Fios cut off because he was averaging, I want to say like 40 terabytes a month. <laughs> so it's not unlimited, unlimited. They will pull the plug if you do oh, yeah. 40 terabytes a month. Yeah, yeah. T Mobile does the same thing. Like it is unlimited, but you can't use like terabytes of data. Um, yeah. <laughs> um,. Oh, crap. I just lost my train of thought. So uh, <laughs> I need to post this to Twitter, but I, I was talking to the, the Comcast person. It said the person's name was Ashley. It was probably some dude in India, but yeah. you never know. And so so they kept saying blast internet. And I was like, you know, capital B, L-E-S-T, exclamation point. So I just asked him, I was like, do you have to type that exclamation point every time you say blast? It's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, or when I was talking to the guys yesterday, like, so what are you looking for? And I said, the fastest internet I can possibly have. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me ask you some questions so we can find you the best package. I'm like, no, I just want to know what the fastest <laughs> internet is. <laughs> Like I told you what I wanted, and you still didn't listen. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Uh, one day, well, mm -hmm. one one day again, I will pick up the phone and get internet, and won't ask for the fastest I can get my hands on. Because because <laughs> when I got FiOS, I looked it up. I'm like, mm, I really don't need to spend that much for five hundred, five hundred. Mm-hmm. Hell, I didn't even pay two hundred bucks a month for two fifty, two fifty. Yeah. <laughs> I You'll be okay with seventy five. I mean, no, I'm at one fifty ten, so I got that. Yeah, I mean, does does, does everyone in your household end up um, doing a lot of downloading at the same time? Uh, I mean, not really. I mean, it's just me and my wife, so yeah, there's no kids or anything, so yeah. not really. The only time it might get, and it really won't get strained on the up. I mean, I could or on the down. I could see the up getting pro you know problems because you know with Skype and video chat yeah. and everything. Yeah. So that could be a problem, but I'm gonna run a hard hard wire to my podcast studio. I'm gonna build in the basement. Right. Gonna go for it. Yeah. Well, that's why Verizon's one of the reasons why Verizon is nice. They always match the up and down mm -hmm. speed. It's symmetrical. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. It's so nice. Because just thinking about it. You know, because always upload the podcast and everything. I'm like, oh, this is going to take so much longer <laughs> when yeah. I move. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a nice house. <laughs> sure, I, eventually, I, you know, I'm sure there'll be better internet rolling out. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I know Pittsburgh is suing Verizon right now, so oh maybe. Oh, God. Yeah, because they gave them all this like money to build out FiOS, and they only built it out like half as much yeah. as they said they would. Apparently, a Tele bunch of cities are doing that. Yeah, the telecoms in this country are so fucked up. Yeah. Oh, God. We could have an entire episode about just like how terrible. We should. We should. And I, I know like it's about how like. There's so much infrastructure in place, so it's really expensive to replace. But and it's so oh, if you're gonna take fucking money from the government, then do what you said. Oh yeah, got you that money. Like, there's no excuse. No excuse. They're they're greedy. It just goes right into their pockets. Yeah, and well, Verizon's already selling off a lot of their FiOS network. Well, they're trying to switch a lot. I know we're trying to end the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. They're trying to uh, switch to a lot to to convince people to use um, like mobile hotspots and 4G LTE because a they can charge a lot more for it and b it's, it's like killing two birds with one stone because they have to build it out for their wireless infrastructure anyway. So I, I don't know. So <laughs> semi related. Have you seen? Starry, the new startup from the guy who did Aereo. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a piece of shit. 
<laughs> I think you guys talked about that on one of your shows, right? Yeah, we did a little bit. All right, that's never going to work. The science is there. Mm, it's like a mesh network, right? It's m- uh, micro micrometer wa- or millimeter wavelengths. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna put satellites in the sky. I don't know. It's crazy, man. No, but that guy, if it wasn't the, that guy who tried to start Arrow, I would probably say, like, I'd really say no way, but that guy, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's the same way. Like, if it had been anyone else, I'd be like, whatever, but, I mean, he, he did, he, Ariel was so good that he had to be taken to the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that's, that's pretty legit. And if you can do that and disrupt the technology that much, mm-hmm. and you have faith in this... I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. The even crazier thing about that, about Arrow, was he was like a, he was like, I think he like start, he was involved with Fox, right? Mm-hmm. And he, he was really involved in the television industry. Um, wait, I want to, like he was basically the, um, wait, I'm going to look it up. Hold on. It's going to take me a minute. That's cool. <laughs> Dead air. <laughs> ba, da, 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 oh, but a- a- era was a really great concept. Um, oh, yeah. I, I was waiting for it because I was living in Tulsa at the time, and my friend who lived in Dallas had it, and he loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to get it from New York, but it never allowed me to. Um, so VPNs are for, man. Yeah, I kind of tried that. Yeah, you also have to have an address. Right. Yeah, I I really like that idea. Uh, you know, I I like what Sling is doing right now, like in PlayStation View TV. Yeah, I tried Sling when it first came out, and it was the shittiest piece of shit software I ever used. I I hope it's gotten better since then. It was it's like... gotten better, but re- I mean, the only reason I really got it was mm-hmm. for ESPN mm-hmm. for college football season. So what I would do is I would just use my login to jump into the ESPN app, which mm-hmm. generally worked pretty good. I mean, every once in a while I watch stuff on it, but I mean, I, it's yeah, that's 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 all I really do did with Sling was watch uh, football. Okay, I was trying to use it for HBO. Uh, no. Couldn't you just use your login and log in directly into HBO? Uh, I didn't. I don't think I had it at the time. Uh, okay. Anyway, I can't find out what I was going <laughs> to so Never mind. <coughs> Maybe it was someone else that was... Anyway, it's going to... I'll probably bring it up like the next time on the show. <laughs> it's going to take me that long. Well, when, whenever you're ready, whenever you want to come on, man, you're more than All welcome. Right. You know, Ryan here, not here, you're more than welcome to come on. Any, hell, any of y'all are. Cool. Ryan's back next week, though? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Cool. I think I'll be here. <laughs> next week, uh, yes. The week after may be a little iffy. Hey, what's just because it'll be, it'll be right after the move and everything else. I mean, I should have everything set up by then, but on the off chance, I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll let you know. I mean, whatever. So if we need people. <laughs> Since you seem to be the only one who can do things during the week. It was Barry Diller. Barry Diller, media executive. Hold on. Fox Broadcasting. He was responsible for the creation of Fox Broadcasting Company and USA Broadcasting. Wow. And there's one other thing that he's famous for. Uh, Pioneering the concept of made-for-television movie. This guy backed... um, So it's not actually the guy that I was thinking. It's not actually the guy that started Arrow, but it was backed by... Uh, IAC, which is the company that was created by this uh, media executive. Huh. Yes. Did not know that. So it was a big deal. <laughs> oh, good. It. Oh, I hear my wife cursing at Bioshock right now. It's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, which one? Uh, she's doing Burial at Sea. 
The, oh, I never did. I didn't play through that. The, yeah. yeah. She's been playing through Infinite the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Did you Have you played that? I played it, yeah. I haven't played it all the way through, but I've seen it all the way through a couple okay. of times. What did you think? It's really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of those games like my wife will play through it about twice a year, three times a year. Mm-hmm. She loves it. I um, think it's definitely one of the best games I've ever played. But the first half is way a thousand times better than the second half. Actually, the first hour is like a thousand times better than the rest of the game. Yeah, I kind of got that feeling too. I mean, the original Bioshock is amazing. Mm-hmm. No, uh, I never. I, I'm not a horror person, so I, can't, I don't play like anything like that. So no jump scares for you, huh? No, no. Um, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's messed up, but I mean, it's messed up like Bioshock Infinite's messed up. So. And Ken, well, that's that guy's name, Ken Levine. He's the, um, I think he was, I don't know, it was like his idea, basically. He was, he's right, really and he did the original game. System Shocks, and yeah. yeah, which that's that's a game I need to go back and play. I played some of it, and it's pretty good for especially for its age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they're remastering it. Ooh, that'll be nice. Yeah. Like the one thing I didn't like about it, it was made really before uh, WASD was like the standard and so it was W A X D and I couldn't I couldn't adjust. Yeah. Like it's like uh, remap the controls. Do what? Remap the keys. I did and it still was X. <laughs> that's that's weird. Tribes yeah. the, Tribes two was like that. It was instead of W A S D it was E S D F. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, or I don't know if you remember way back in the day we used to have to use the arrow keys on the right side of the keyboard yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember doing that in, like, Dark Forces. <laughs> you know, you stretch all the way across your keyboard <laughs> using your mouse. Or or worse, you're, you work in the number pad. Yeah. I, I played some of those games. I love the original Dark Forces and Jedi Knight, like, Dark Forces 2. So good. Uh, oh, I, the Star Wars games. I didn't really play too many of the earlier ones, uh, but Jedi Academy. Did you ever play? That was the last Jedi Knight game. No, I never. I never uh, got that far. Uh, it's the best Star Wars game ever. <laughs> that could be another discussion. Oh, that's an entire other podcast. What's the best Star Wars game ever? Yeah, that'd be fun. Because you got to go all the way back to like the old old arcade game you set mm-hmm. in with like the. Vector graphics. <laughs> and you got like Pod Racer on the 64, which was hella fun. <laughs> the only good part of the new trilogy. Pretty much, yeah. Everyone tells me KOTOR is really good, but I couldn't get into it. Yeah, I haven't. I, I, put, I keep playing like ten, the first 10 minutes of that game and stopping. I, need to, <laughs> I probably own it for like four different platforms now. <laughs> yeah, cool. I've got it. I've got so many. Because I've got I've got X Wing, I have X Wing and Tie Fighter and GOG. I picked up another Star Wars bundle on Humble Bundle, mm-hmm. so now I have them on Steam. Yeah, you might actually own um, Jedi Academy already. <laughs> actually, I think I do. I'm pretty sure I do. It's back when I, like two winter sales ago, they had their their entire Star Wars catalog for twenty bucks. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. there goes twenty dollars. <laughs> But mm-hmm. Jedi Knight didn't work. It pissed me off. Like oh, it really? was completely broken. So you didn't it's Jedi Knight and then Jedi Knight Two, Jedi Outcast, and Jedi Knight Three, Jedi Academy? No. Yeah, I think so. And then what there's and then there's Mysteries of the Sith, which is a Jedi Knight game, but it's not really in the chronology. It's where you play mm-hmm. as Mara Jade. Whoa, there was a game where you played as Mar. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Huh? Sweet. Dark yeah. Forces. Dark Forces 2, Mysteries of the Sith. Yeah, Mysteries of the Sith is where you play as Mar Oh, okay. Jedi Knight, the first Jedi Knight was the was Dark Forces 2. Right. That's very mm-hmm. And then it turned into the uh the Jedi Knight series. I wonder if they sell this is cool. I didn't know there was a game you played as Mario Jade. That was a lot of fun. I mean, it came out right on the heels of Jedi Knight, so it was pre. It, I think it's the an identical engine. Mm-hmm. 
But it was, you know, it was really fun. Had good multiplayer. It was like Jedi Knight was like one of the first multiplayer games I ever played online. Oh yeah. People hated me <laughs> because in Jedi Knight you had the um, light side, dark side, and you could like pick powers from both of them. Mm-hmm. But if you went all light or all dark, you um, got a special bonus power, mm-hmm. and the special bonus power for the Sith was basically death vision. Anything you looked at took damage. <laughs> so I was playing in the server with like six people and there was this big battle going on. So I got basically up in a you know, sniper's crow's, crow's nest mm-hmm. and turned on the death vision and killed the entire server. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately got kicked. <laughs> <laughs> Like, people would always bitch. I'm like, it's you could do it too. It's in. I'm not like breaking the game here. Yeah. People are dicks. People, <laughs> people are dicks on the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, yeah. You see that one guy is uh, getting, uh, uh, getting his. Oh, the guy who was in charge, like, was the main hacker in the, uh, the fappening. Is getting, oh yeah, he got like, caught he, today. I saw that. Yeah, he got a uh, like three years in prison or something. Yeah. Oh, did he get actually convicted? Yeah, he got convicted of some like <laughs> unlawful use of something or other. I mean, hmm. hacker himself that so news will plead guilty to the twenty fourteen hack. But did he actually do any hacking? I. A phishing scheme. I guess it's illegal. To, it's, I guess you're you're being fraudulent if you send emails that are illegal. You know. Right. Yeah. Five years in prison. I mean, it's pretty fucked up. It was really <laughs> fucked up. You know. You shouldn't release photos of people if it's if it's against their consent. If you don't have their consent. Just. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't do anything towards or to anyone without their consent. Well, that gets kind of hairy. Uh, we're gonna have to have that super fight podcast, aren't we? Uh, you should have heard the other Alex talking about fe- feminism. I was like, <laughs> I was like, are you but, sure you have a vagina? Because this is pretty crazy. <laughs> but on, on the last last Jensen cast, yeah, yeah, I listened to it. I listened to it. Yeah. Oh good, that was we oh we had well we had to talk about it afterwards after the episode was over and because I'm by no means like necessarily a feminist like I can I don't know I I'm not like a, the person who you talk to about it I I know a lot of other people who are better to talk to about it than me and it was rough. <laughs> yeah. That would be an interesting. We yeah we should definitely have a super fight about this. Mm-hmm. Well, like I'm saying, like we need to get someone who actually knows anything about feminism so that they can talk about it. And it's not just me being like, well, I think feminism, blah, blah, blah. You know? It, I guarantee you, if we actually decide to do it, it'll be no big deal to find someone who wants to oh, yeah, yeah. to carry that torch. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, yeah, that would, that would be fun to do. And I would, I would just play devil's advocate so hard and crush him it'd be so much fun well soon right so <laughs> we're gonna get that off the ground yeah well it's all those things like we talk about it but no one's really doing anything about yeah, it yeah we're like... all pretty busy they'll be i think especially director alex she'll have time um probably this summer yeah that's done. what i was guessing yeah okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> We were like trying to end the show, and then it was like thirty <laughs> minutes later, we're still oh, going. We never really settled Marvel versus DC. <laughs> we're just gonna go with a good. It depends. It depends. Well, as ever, I will have to say Marvel. I, yeah, I mean, all in all, I mean, <laughs> I gotta lean towards Marvel too because I like the heroes a lot more. Uh huh. Even uh, the villains are great. The villains are great. Red Skull's great. Doctor Doom's great. Who else? The Purple Man is pretty. I mean, he's a yeah. horrible human being, but he's great. Yeah, the problem. Uh, the problem. Mag- Magneto is often cited as one of the best supervillains ever. 
Yeah, and that's one thing I liked about First Class, is they really mm-hmm. did have the, which side would you really choose, you know? Because let's Plus, be honest. Like, his if, story makes so much sense, and it's so compelling. It's like, oh, God, he was literally in the Holocaust, and it's like, you know, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, it's, it's uh, you know, if you were a mutant and they were treating you that way, wouldn't you probably follow Magneto? Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest. And, and it's like you can kind of understand what Magneto's doing, kind of. Like, I'm I'm the kind of person who never, ever, ever forgives um, fictional characters who have done evil things. Like, Snape never forgiving him. I don't know. Who are some other characters that are <laughs> double-sided? There's tons of them in the Files. But Magneto is one of the only characters where I can, like, kind of accept it. Well, it's easy to empathize with them, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's why Marvel's better. <laughs> yes, Marvel to me was always humans who had superpowers. Where DC is more just about the superheroes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one reason I always like Spider-Man. He's like, it's a dude, yeah, you know? he's cool. He's just a dude, and yeah. he got bit by a spider, and now he's got all this shit thrown upon him. He doesn't know <laughs> what to do. Yeah. And he gets to date Black Cat. Cool. Did you did you ever see Chronicle? No. Uh, it was an indie movie, sort of a lost footage kind of movie. Okay. Um, it's about these kids who get superpowers. Oh, 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 it was recent. It was like a couple years ago. Right? A couple years ago, yeah, yeah. And I didn't see it. it. It's a, it's really good. Okay. It kind of drags near the end, but it, it's really good. Like. This is exactly what high school kids would do if they had superpowers. They wouldn't become Spider-Man. They would become assholes. <laughs> it's really good. Like it's it, it's definitely worth checking out. Okay. Yes, I will check it out. Like, it's good enough that I actually bought it. <laughs> oh yeah. Like we rented it one day and it was like, "Wow, oh, this is really good. I should buy it on Blu-ray." So I actually bought it. I'll check it out. This <laughs> was like She's all over the place. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> I thought that's what this was all about. It is what it's all about. It's mm-hmm. just... <laughs> uh, it's just weird. It's been a while since I've been this just all over the map with, yeah. <laughs> with the podcast. It's great. <laughs> yeah, you're actually, your last podcast was pretty well received on, on the downloads. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, more than more than our normal. I won't let that go to my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the title didn't hurt either. Oh, the one where we talked about Harry Potter, yeah. Yeah, it was like the one with Harry Potter. It's like the yeah. one that, the, like, one of the early episodes, the one about porn. I don't know, it gets a huge watch, like on YouTube and <laughs> and on the downloads. Mm. I should check that one out. <laughs> oh yeah, we talked about all sorts of like, because like Pornhub had released a bunch of statistics about. Oh, their different website, countries. different countries, different search terms, that kind of crap. What are you good. guys on YouTube? Uh, Forty Two Podcast, I think. I've been trying to update it, um, and definitely will work harder before I leave this wonderful internet. This is Forty F O R T Y, the numeral two podcast. Oh, there you are. You can see some of my terrible, like, trying to do Let's Plays with Dota. Okay, I'm going to definitely watch. Most of that was just, like, trying to figure out the best way to do it. But yeah, I think I've got, like, the first 30-something episodes up on YouTube. All right, I'll check it out. Uh, did you talk about Broken Jars yet? Yes, we have. We'll plug it again. Brokenjars.xyz. It's our new awesome... Um, thing we're doing the collective of podcasts and gaming channels and stuff <laughs> i think that's the best way to say it it's just yeah. we may eventually have blogs on there too because i've got a friend who blogs a lot and i told him he might start doing something you know for funsies if you want to do something let us know broken jars broadcasting at gmail.com be more than happy to uh 
to look at you and see what you're doing. And if you want to hop on board, we'll host you. All you got to do is create the content. And we'll pretty much do anything as long as it isn't like super crazy. Like no militant anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care how good you think your cause is. If you're going crazy with it, no. <laughs> Even if it's a good cause. If you push it too far, no. So would you allow a Donald Trump podcast as long as it's not militant? Like he's a ter- like he's a terrible person. Don't ever vote for him. And here's why. No, just having... So there you go. There are some limits on the things that you can do. There are some limits, but not many. Okay. <laughs> like like I said, like I mean, we all curse quite a bit in our podcast, so that's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like I just don't want you to call like. I don't want you calling to kill anybody or to hurt anybody or to steal things. Don't do any of that kind of stuff. No advocating breaking most laws. Don't do that ever. Man, I got the best I told you so into this. First of all, obviously, I don't support Trump. He's insane. So whenever, and I know we're trying to end the show. One more story. Whenever I talk about Trump and like at all for any reason, People are like, oh, okay, so you support Trump? No. Fucking hate Trump. But I got the best I told you so in today. Like like a couple of months ago, my friend and I were talking about Donald Trump, and I was like, I don't know, it's possible he might, you know, start getting traction. It's definitely possible. And then it was like, and then my friend was like, no way, dude, it's never going to happen. And it's like four months later, <laughs> he's pretty much going to win the nomination. There's almost no way. Unless they... Um, do a brokered convention. He's gonna win. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, it and it's with him not winning Ohio and splitting a lot of votes in a lot of other places. There's a chance. It's a chance that there'll be a broke that he won't have a majority. Right. And then it becomes a brokered convention. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way to stop him. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. And now, like Rubio's out, so all of his delegates are free agents. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm surprised they don't have like a backup thing. Like, okay, well, <laughs> he was supposed he wasn't supposed to leave. Yeah, right. he wasn't supposed to leave. I don't know. He just did so terribly. I guess there was a great Reddit post about him, about him quitting and everybody just ragging on him. Yeah, I think he was like the guy. Like he was going to win yep. the whole thing. Yep. I don't know. Like, like the only choices for president are bad, worse. Even worse. Just terrible. It's true. This is not a great year for the presidential election. Just, I, all I can think is, like, is this seriously the best we can do? Mm-hmm. Is this seriously the best we can do? It definitely messed up. It's kind of like when, in 2012, I mean, if any pre- incumbent president is... I mean, Defeating a seated president is hard to do. Mm-hmm. If any incumbent president was going to get beat, it was Obama in 2012. Yeah. I'm like, and all, the best you can do is put Romney out there? <laughs> really? I, I think that's a, this is a topic for another time, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean hell, Romney into... seems like a great choice compared to everyone else right now. That's true. True. Like one of those I mean, sad yet true statements. Uh, Ted Cruz. I, I, I'm going to go off if we <laughs> if we go into this. So you won't be able to stop me. Next time. Right. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'm just waiting for like the the super fight about like economic theory. That'll never <laughs> happen because that's that's my deal. It'll happen. <laughs> Which side do you come on in? Uh, I tend to be more. Um, you know, uh, Austrian laissez-faire, um, within reason, obviously. Um, there are, uh, I mean, like this is. I'm too tired to actually really get into this right now. But there's, I mean, there's a lot of things. I'm really interested to see, because Quebec is trying to do guaranteed minimal income. Oh like, wow! Um, which Everybody gets money, even if they're not working. Right. But, and that's been really intriguing to me because, so in like in the United States, if you were to make 
the bottom 45% of earners tax rate zero, the government would actually make more money? Because they're actually... Because because of all the credits and everything that yeah. go out, you know, there's a lot of people who make a lot more out of the system than they put in. Right. Um, so you know, it, my thought is like, if you were, if you were to do away with every social program, right? No more Social Security, no more Medicaid, nothing, or pretty much every, and did guarantee an income, would it be cheaper? And maybe raise people's standard of living. Too bad nobody would ever go for that, even if it's smarter. Yeah, I mean, but you would have. Well, see, the thing is, no one would ever go for it because you'd be getting rid of like a, the people on the right wouldn't go for it because it's crazy socialism, and the people right. on the left wouldn't go for it because you're ending a lot of social programs. Right. So, I don't know. Hey, I agree with you, but and that's what I don't understand about people hating on Obamacare. It's like, why wouldn't? Why would you fight to not have health insurance? It's, it's. I get that it's a personal freedom thing, but a the only way for for I know like right end the show. <laughs> the only way for health insurance in this country to work is if everybody's paying for it, right? Right. I mean, there's what I would. The way it's done and the way they're pushing things is making it more expensive than it needs to be. It's not, you know, it's not a free market solution. Because, um, I mean, I, I used to shop because I used to have my own individual health insurance mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And the day my policy, my, the benefits that my policy were giving me, the price tripled the day the exchanges went into effect for what I for what I was getting. So I, I went mean, from like that sounds like a terrible health insurance company. That's not really a right. No, but it was the exchange. But it was you know it was because it was a, considered a better than normal plan. It was right. taxed super high. So I went from you know the price went from two hundred and sixty a month to almost seven hundred. I mean that's crazy. Yeah, and so it's it's a very inefficient system. Well, I think the whole idea, right? was to make healthcare companies make less money. But that, see, that's, so okay, so, no, but. Instead the, of raising your healthcare plan in order to afford subsidizing other plans, they could have just made less money. Right, but insurance companies, on average, make 2% profit. That's got to be bullshit. It's not. That's crazy. I mean, their margins I mean, are razor thin as it is. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but they might the two percent profit might still be like billions and billions of it's dollars. It's still only two percent. There, that means that means How, they should be making like. I, I'm I'm probably pretty liberal when it comes to this to social stuff. Like, I mean, to um, economic stuff. Like, I believe there should be a cap on the amount of money people can make, and that people making more money should be taxed higher. Than people making less money. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, that's how it works now. Sort of. There's no cap on the amount of money you can make. Well, there should never be a cap on the amount of money you can make because it sure. encouraged it. Dis. If there, there was shouldn't a be a, sorry, there shouldn't be a cap on like the amount of profit you can make as a company, but like bonuses and salary, there sh there maybe there should be a cap. Right, but then you, I mean, if, if you start taking away incentives, then you won't be getting as much awesome stuff. I mean, if there were certain caps and certain things in place, you wouldn't have Google. You wouldn't have Amazon. Yeah, people can just be less greedy. Well, I mean, <laughs> greed is good, right? Yeah, in a lot of respects, greed is good. Well, greed is what destabilized the global economy in 2008 with the subprime mortgages. Well, yes. But greed is what destabilized the economy in 2008. Okay. Subprime mortgages, like, but okay. So first thing about subprime mortgages, okay, they never should have been. They were pushed by the U.S. government, and they were required by the U.S. government back in the 90s. The Clinton signed the act in like 92 or 93. Okay, um, so a they never would have been there in a truly free market. 
B. I don't even wait, know. Wait, that's BS. That's not true. <laughs> the truly free market was the companies themselves accepting the loans. I, I, that's got to be that. No, but the thing is with Fannie and Freddie, there was a backer for the loans. So most pe- most bankers could take the loans and then immediately sell them to the government. That's what happened. Subpermanent name. Hold on. I can't look this up because right, so for some bundling American some prime and bundling into MBSs. And then I don't like I've got a pretty good head for you know options and stuff, but the credit default swap was I can't I still cannot get my head around how it works. What is that? Okay, the credit default swap is this way of insuring mortgages that basically as long as things keep going up, you keep making money, but they drop, you lose a ton. And you could um, leverage it a hundred fold. So you you could basically, on a $100,000 home, you could basically bet $10 million on that $100,000 home. And that's what really destabilized the economy was all this money floating around in these credit default swaps. So when the bottom fell out of the economy and home prices fell, all those guys who were leveraged to the hilt lost everything. Hmm. So, I mean, it's more than just like the loans going bad. I mean, if the loans had just gone bad, it wouldn't have. I mean, it would have been a big deal, but it wouldn't have been nearly as big of a deal as it was. But since so much money was leveraged on top of these loans, stupidly, I'm not saying it was smart, but since so much money was on top of those loans. Let's go back. Sorry. Let's go back to subprime subprime mortgages, because I think you kind of got it wrong. In this very quick reading on Wikipedia that I did. It sounds like the subprime mortgages were allowed. Yes, you're right. They were allowed to happen because of the uh, the how it was tied to the U.S. government. But back, but the banks took advantage of the that it, like they didn't have to. They weren't required to accept those loans. They just saw an opportunity to make tons of money, even though they knew it was going to fuck everyone. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right, the bursting of the U.S. housing bubble, which peaked in 2004, caused the values of securities tied to U.S. real estate pl- securities are are things with the government. Real estate pricing to plummet, damaging financial institutions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, providing easier access to loans for subprime borrowers, and then that's how it started. Right, that's how it started, but I mean, there's more. There's the more. banks were giving out loans to people that they knew were not going to be able to pay them back. Hold on. I'm pulling something up here. Okay. Uh, and that's why many of them folded, like one after one. So, yeah, I mean, I'm reading this Forbes article. Um, I mean, banks, man. Money. Yeah, I, we're going to have to go into this more because I know I am more right than that Wikipedia, <laughs> Wikipedia article is. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, th- I mean, I thought that was a widely accepted thing. It is widely accepted, and it's widely wrong. What? <laughs> I mean, there. So wait, so wait. The banks, so wait. the banks didn't take loans from people who they knew were going to fold. Yes, they did. They did, right? But they had the insurance of the U.S. government, so they made the loans. That's BS. That's BS. That's like saying. That's like saying. I have really good health insurance, so it's okay for you to shoot me in the face. No, it's it's like That's exactly like what it's saying. No, it's saying I can make money with zero risk by selling it off. I but, can make it I can do something terrible no, no, no. 
But again, okay, so there's but there's zero risk in getting shot in the face because you have really good health insurance. But do you see what I'm saying? See the, the leap in logic there? Just because the U.S. government is backing you, if you have knowledge that they don't have the means to back you and you do it anyway, then you're taking advantage of people. Well, I, I didn't... What the banks did was <laughs> wrong and stupid. Right. But they wouldn't have been able to do it without a artificial safety blanket. They still shouldn't have done it. Oh, I did. That's not the. That's we not what get, I'm saying. <laughs> we should they should Alex, not have done it. But the reason they Alex could do it, because <laughs> because they because the other Alex would probably like agree with you even more. <laughs> he was pretty conservative. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be one of our our my longest forty two podcasts ever. Yeah, it's an epic. <laughs> it's. Two plus. It's a it's a podcast opera. <laughs> Get it? Like they call Star Wars a space opera. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, space mm-hmm. opera. Uh, good times. <laughs> okay, let's really end it this time. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Did we ever decide on Marvel versus? <laughs> All right, I got it. It depends. It depends. That's the answer. It really depends. Okay. <laughs> so. so. Ladies and gentlemen, from all of us here at the 42 Podcast, we appreciate you coming to this giant, it's mega giant episode of the 42 Podcast. And we hope to see you all next week. Mm. He didn't outright say it, but they more than doubled the salary. So I'm like, man, maybe I could put up with that if they more than doubled my salary. Yeah. Yeah, that's how those big companies do, right? Yeah, I wish my big company did that. Because <laughs> I work for a Fortune 100 company or Fortune oh. 200 company. I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I've already ranted about the bonus structure and pay raise structure at my job. I won't do it yeah. again for the okay, people listening. I have to go back and listen. At least I think I have. If I haven't, maybe I'll do it some other time. Okay. All right. So you wanted to talk... Because we always talk virtual reality on this podcast. So you want to talk some PlayStation VR? So what's going on with that Yeah, shit? so, well, let me go through the backstory a little bit of my uh, gaming history, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It all started when I was five years old. And I was, no. <laughs> well, actually, I was around six and I got the, I got an NES for Hanukkah. Nice. And uh, that's when it all started. But um, for a really long time, I was a PC gamer. Long time, like 10 years. And then this past uh, holiday season, I decided to buy a PlayStation because it was, like, super cheap. Did I tell you the story about how I got the PlayStation? You have not. We have not heard this story. Uh, all right. It's a good story. I promise. It's a good story. Having so, a new podcast host is like having a new girlfriend. You get to hear all the new stories. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend is so tired of all my stories. So it's really good, though. Uh, for, like, the whole holiday season from, like, like the like the end of November until like January tenth or I don't remember when it went out. So anyway, they were selling PS a uh, PS4 and either the the uh, Nathan Drake collection or Battlefront Star Wars Battlefront. Right, I remember you that. Could, either one of those, it was three hundred bucks. Pretty good deal. Yeah, I it was tempting. If I didn't already have like a pretty serious rig, I might have yeah. picked one up. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I mean, there was some better deals for the Xbox One, um, but for the PS4. That was that was like the best deal. Um, so it was three hundred bucks and the game, and then uh, like for like for like two months, I was like, I'm going to buy a PS4. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a console. It's a great deal. I might as well just do it. I had getting been getting more and more tired of taking care of my PC, and I was like, I'm just going to get a console. The the night before I decide to buy it. It's 12 a.m. I check the price. It's still $300. And, like, every every retailer, Best Buy, like, every single one, they all had it for $300. Two hours later, I'm about to go to sleep. It's 2 a.m. And it's $350. They <laughs> raised the price. The And I could see across every website, every retailer, that the uh, sales were ending. So I'm like, this is crazy. I have to buy it right now for $300. I see that Target still has it on sale at two ninety nine, and Best Buy will do a, will do price matches with large retailers. So I call up Best Buy and I'm like, 
I, you I see, called them at 2 a.m.? Yes, and they picked up. The customer service picked up Best Buy. <laughs> and I was like, well, actually, the deal at Best Buy had become it's three fifty, and you get a $50 Best Buy gift card. So it's still kind of two ninety nine, but you have to pay three fifty up front and then use the fifty dollar gift card on something else. Right. That's really annoying. So I was like, Can you please price match this? I understand if I can't get the gift card, but I'd rather spend the three hundred now than spend three fifty. And Best Buy price matched for two ninety nine the Nathan Drake bundle and gave me the fifty dollar gift card. So it was like it was two fifty. Nice. And that was my story. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. It was down to the wire, man. In, be- in between the phone call with the, be- with the Best Buy associate, Target changed their website, so it was no longer three <laughs> two ninety nine. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I have a PS4. I've had one for a month or two. It's pretty great, and I've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone else in between, welcome back to the 42 Podcast, where as always we are talking about the failings of the late great human race. And once again, from last time, our good friend Alex. Hey Alex, how are you doing today, buddy? Well, doing good, how about you? Oh, uh, it's alright, man. I'm just, yeah. it's, it's uh, getting ready to move and work and everything else. It's just been, it's been craziness here, so just hoping to... To get things going and doing okay. It's another week closer, right? Yeah, you know, it's uh, we're moving a week from Saturday. Oh my god! Well, I wish you luck. Thanks. We're getting movers to help us unload the truck, so that'll be nice. Yeah, sweet. This house is essentially four stories, so oh I don't really want to be lugging furniture all the way up because it has a it has a basement and a finished attic, mm-hmm. and I don't want to be lugging like washers and dryers are <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand man it's like it's totally worth the two or three hundred dollars i'm paying those guys for four hours yep <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah you don't want to break your back no that's the nice thing about having a job that pays okay you can you can you can splurge when it comes to moving and stuff because mm-hmm. i've moved so many times where i've just yeah. had to like at least this move i'm not having to like rush to move out yeah like, oh when when i was in my early 20s i was living in this apartment complex and they really wanted me they really because they knew i wasn't renewing and someone wanted to move in early so i get a call <laughs> like a tuesday and like if you can be out by thursday night we'll give you 500 bucks oh my god so i'm like um okay <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'll go live with my family for a couple of weeks until I can yeah. find a new apartment. But for five hundred bucks, especially when you're, you know, twenty-two, twenty-three, it's you know, I mean, even now, five hundred bucks is in a small amount of money. But yeah. But anyway, so that's kind of what's going on in my world, you know, and work and all that crap. So yeah, yeah, work. Yeah. So, what do you do, Senior Alex? Like, you're a programmer? Like, uh, professionally, I'm a I'm a web developer. Yeah. I, I uh, develop websites. Okay, so why haven't you done anything with our website? <laughs> well, we're we're using content management system, and I don't want to get too technical, uh, but uh, those can be difficult to deal with. Like, if you're if you're trying to do something that they don't handle, it can be difficult. Ah, uh, okay. We don't, hey, don't, don't feel bad about getting technical. We have bored <laughs> our audience to death with getting yeah. technical and weird shit. So. Yeah. so that's one of like the perils of using WordPress is like, if you're trying to use it to do something that it's not supposed to do, then it can be a real pain. Well, I am not a professional like you. So, I mean, if you want to use something else, we can definitely switch over. That's fine. No, no, if no, you no, want to make good. it super awesome or whatever. I think our website's really nice. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, Squarespace, Squarespace, all in all, does a pretty good job pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've, I rec- I haven't used it myself, but I've weirdly recommended it to a lot of people. <laughs> like, like, people are like, what do I do about a website? And I'm just like, just use Squarespace. Yeah, and if you pay for, the, like, the year up front, they give you a domain for free, so that's not too right. bad. 
Forty Two Entertainment, not sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> <It's not laughs> but if they want to sponsor us, we'll be more than happy to, <laughs> to let them. I think some like Audible. <clears throat> they have this thing. It's like uh, it's kind of like Amazon does with the uh, affiliate links. So basically, for every person you get to sign up with Audible, they pay you. Right. So instead of yeah. like paying you up front. I'm sure that more information about PSVR. Um, and then this past week, they announced a release date and a price. I don't, have you read about it at all? No, I haven't had a chance. Yeah, so it's going to be three ninety nine. Um, it's not bad. Yeah, and it's coming out in October. And just for reference, I don't know if you guys talked about this. I, I mean, you mentioned it before, but the HT, the HTC Vive is seven ninety nine, right? And the Oculus Rift is uh, five ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So it's coming in well below, but uh, but the specs are obviously not as good as the um, as the as the Vive or the Oculus. Um, I don't know. So have you tried any VR headsets at all? Uh, Oculus. You did. Mm-hmm. What can you tell? When did you? Uh, 2014 San Diego Comic Con. Oh yeah. Did you do the? What did you do? The Eve Valkyrie or whatever. It was a Pacific Rim demo. Oh, cool. Yeah. It was cool. So yeah, it was really cool. It's, you've seen Pacific Rim, right? Uh, I saw like the last half of it. Oh god. Yeah. I know. I missed that one. Uh, well, it, it's yeah. It's if you when you see the beginning, it's. Like when his br- basically when his brother dies, it's that part of the movie. But from, I'm always gonna call him Jax because that's who he is in Sons of Anarchy. I don't remember, yeah. don't remember his name in Pacific Rim. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, it's from his point of view, and it was like a two minute demo, and it was really cool. Like it was really cool. Yeah. Was that the the dev kit? Yeah, yeah. Like it's, this was two years ago, so it was like, you know, not nearly what they're putting out now. Yeah. Do you remember which dev kit it was? Because there was dev kit one and then dev kit. Two. Um, I want to say it was one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My company actually gave all of us, or t- all of us. Yeah, they gave all the employees at the time. There was or all the devs, but there was only like four or five. They gave us all uh, dev kit twos from Oculus. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I only I only actually ended up using it a little bit because it was pretty cumbersome and hard to use. Um, but there's this game called uh, Elite Dangerous. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Yeah, for the for the uh, listeners who may not know, Elite Dangerous is a uh, a uh, f- space flight simulator. It's uh, and it's also like kind of MMOE, right? Mm, kind of. They, they basically instance everything so you're not like you can play with other players but you kind of have to arrange it it's not like a regular mmo where you are constantly surrounded by other people okay um but playing that in oculus rift dude i would spend and i'm actually thinking about doing this don't tell my girlfriend because she'll kill me (laughs) i mean she kind of already knows already like i would spend like the 1600 dollars on a really nice pc plus the 600 dollars on a really nice on the oculus just to play that one fucking game in vr because that's how (laughs) it is it's so transformative and god dude oh my god it's crazy yeah that's if you ever oh god if you ever get the chance like it's so amazing yeah that I, cause we, I think, I mean, I'll be on the low end, but I'll be able to run an Oculus on my yeah. rig. Do you, what, uh, GPU do you have? Um, I've got a, you know, let me pull up the specs. Is it AMD? Yeah, it's an AMD. Oh, okay. Um, I'm never buying AMD ever again. It was good uh, for the, it was good. Uh, no, the price, the price is always great, but you always get, and you always end up getting bitten in the ass by the shitty drivers. I have definitely had some driver issues, that is for sure, especially with Windows 10. Like, Windows 10 yeah. has been a been a. Yeah, I bitch. was having blue screens of death. Do what? Um, I was having uh, blue screens of death on their shitty drivers. But blue screen of death, they were... It was making my computer all fucked up. Yeah. Uh, so, but... Luckily, it's I, luckily it's calmed down. Yeah. So I'll run through my specs here real quick. Okay. So I've got an Asus Pro R2 motherboard. 
um, a Sapphire VPX, Vapor X Radeon R9270. Okay. I've got two of those cross fired. Oh, okay. Then you should be fine. Um, I, and I got the AMD FX 8350 Black Edition, a core, 4 gigahertz. AMD? Huh? Yeah, the AMD. I don't know how that would run, how that's compared to whatever processor they want. It was, but a, I guess it would, I mean, it compares well to a lot of the last generation i sevens before like mm. the brand new generation. And I'm running uh 32 gigs of DDR three Ram. Okay. Do you know how many USB ports you have? Uh, on the front two and on the back, I want to say like five, four. Yeah, because apparently you need at least four USB 3.0 ports. USB 3.0 ports. Four of them. Four? I thought it was just two. Maybe. I don't know. I should check. Maybe it's two and one USB 2.0. I don't remember. But it's crazy. You need like a lot of USB ports. Um, I, yeah, I would make sure like... That you're that's up to snuff before you spend the six. Oh months. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm sure they there is like an Oculus Rift, you know, yeah, tester tool. Website. Yeah. 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 For did, sure. Did you also? They have. Uh, we'll get. I'm sure we'll, we'll get back to PSVR in a minute. But did you see? Um, they they're selling Oculus ready PCs, desk, desktop PCs. Yeah, I've seen that. They're, they're actually some of them are actually pretty good deals. Um, I don't know. especially. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I saw somebody was selling an Oculus specific graphics card that had the extra USBs built oh, in. Sure. So basically, what I did is you put the put the graphics card in the back, and it had another thing that went into one of your SATA slots with uh, like a, like a US like two, two USB 3.0 slots that you could just hook directly into. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, obviously, it was a beefy graphics card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting, you know, all this, um, all this stuff. And they've been saying this would be a thing for twenty years. I know it's finally yeah, here. I think, I think even now it's still pretty early. Uh, like it's still like all these systems, except well, except for the PSVR, they're all going to be in pre-order for a long time, and the uh, the the inventory is going to be super low. Right, but this is the first time where there's been a major push into the homes with virtual reality. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's never been anything like this before. That's true. Well, except for the, what's it called, the the game, the Nintendo thing. Oh, Virtual Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was awesome. I love Virtual Boy. Uh, uh, so, so PSVR, um, there's a, uh, so yeah, so the... Uh, the thing about PSVR that's interesting is even though it's a lower cost, the fact that the P- the PlayStation 4 only has like so much processing power, and um, like people are wondering what kind of games is the PSVR actually going to be able to render. Um, and so there's I don't know how you've heard of Google Cardboard, right? Yeah. yeah and the and the Samsung Gear VR. Yeah. It's kind of like PSVR is in a is in a mid place between Oculus and Samsung VR. Okay, so I mean, it's going to there's going to be a lot of people adopt that because they can just buy it and plug it in their place. Oh yeah, sure. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it like crazy because eh? <laughs> it's so it's like so much cheaper. Um, Squarespace does a similar thing. Oh, I'm sure they do. And man, I love I love uh, uh, Audible. Love that service. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, I've had my ups and downs with Audible, actually. I don't know if you want to go into that. Well, what's, well, what I like about it is, at least now, you can return books. So if you get like an hour into it and you realize, wow, this narrator sucks, you can return it. Yeah, they, yeah, they didn't have that when I first started, I don't think. Yeah, that's a new feature that makes it so you don't get like burned real bad. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, the thing about Audible that I didn't realize either when I first started... Well, I'll just explain the whole... It doesn't take very long to explain. Um, basically, I was um, I was subscribed to Audible, and I was, like, too lazy to shut it off. And it, it, it went for, like, six months. So I had, like... And I think I was just subscribed to, like, the two-credit-per-month thing. 
Oh, so you Jesus. get two books a month. Or maybe not. Maybe it was one credit. But I had like a ton of, like a huge backlog of credits. <laughs> and it came time, I was like, I'm just going to cancel this because I'm never using the credits. So this is, this is stupid. I'm paying. So I was going to cancel it. And I didn't realize that you have to use all of the credits before you cancel your subscription. And I just went nuts. I was like, are you kidding me? I've been paying like $15 a month for this service. Why should I have to like dump all my credits on books I might not even want right now? You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I haven't had that issue with it. Yeah. No, my, if if was... you want to cancel, you can't have credits that are unspent. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah. I got them to allow me to cancel my subscription while being able to keep the credits. If the if Kindle Unlimited had a better selection of audiobooks, I would mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, they do audiobooks? Yeah, and they they'll sync with your Kindle. So if you're like the, reading on your Kindle, it'll pick up. But the Kindle Unlimited is like the thing where you get a book every month, right? As part of no, I'm it's ten bucks. All you can read, all you can listen to. Right. So, but their their selection isn't as big as Audible's mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. But I'm just waiting for you know, the five to ten years down the road when Amazon Prime is like unlimited audiobooks, unlimited comic books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cell phones are we're gonna be paying like five hundred bucks a month for Amazon Prime, but it's gonna be everything you could ever <laughs> use. Internet service provider. Yeah. Amazon is a pretty great company, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Their employees are terrible people, but it's a good company. <laughs> Wait, why do you say that? Oh, I, uh, well, I can't, this, this is a, you generalizing from the couple I've met, but, uh, last year I interviewed with a startup out in Seattle and the two people who would have been my boss were both ex Amazon guys Mm -hmm. and they were assholes Yeah, and arrogant sons of bitches. I'm like, dude, come on. You're not, you're not this cool. (laughs) <laughs> but they think you're like oh i worked at amazon I'm like what do you do were they tech guys like engineers or um one of them was and like and you know like the guys who weren't as high a level that i met there were pretty cool even the ones that like there was one that was at amazon before this other company and he was really cool, but he was like, yeah, you know, Amazon's it's a job and it sucks. But the other guys are like, raw, Amazon is the best <laughs> thing ever. So, uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I hear there's a pretty big, big split between, like, the tech workers at Amazon and the non-tech workers. Like, if, if you're, like, a warehouse worker, it sucks. But if you're, like, a programmer, it's awesome. <laughs> That's what I heard. You can take your dog to work. Oh, yeah, Amazon, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, I got actually a guy who... I was working with at my current job. He went to Amazon not too long ago. 